What is going on, Thumb Thumbs? It is your boy, Thumb Brother 2, but I am not alone, ladies and gentlemen. It is the old dynamic duo that is returning for a brand new season of the LDLG Max League. It is your boy, Thumb Brother 2, and I am joined with the Blazing Squid. Say hi to the folks, Squid. What it do, players and trainers? I know you guys missed this intro. I am so excited to be back in LDL, man. It has been a good minute. It really oh, has man. for both of us. We have been gone for quite a minute. Exactly. Well, I did do the, the, the Showdown League, but you guys know how I feel about Showdown. It's not the same as Cards Ridge. It, it, really, it really isn't. It isn't. But we are both very, very excited to bring you guys brand new season of LDL, the G Max division of the LDL. Squid, what season is this for the LDL? This is season 11. Season if 11. I'm not mistaken. Holy cow. And then this is the first season on the Switch? This would be the first season on Switch. And for all those that know, you know, I am the first season on the DS. So might as well keep the train going right i don't know about that squid we we have got some amazing teams lined up ahead of us and some amazing coaches this season as well as well as not only with you and i returning for this brand new season a couple other coaches returning after a little bit of a hiatus that we are more than excited to see so uh i guess i believe there were are there 12 or 16 coaches here this season we have 12 coaches. 12 coaches. Okay, so I believe that is 142 picks we have to get through. So um, we are just going to go ahead and just jump right into the first pick. But before we do, we want to make sure you guys hit that like button down below. And definitely leave a comment letting us know who is your favorite team captain. Of course, my favorite team captain all day is got to be the Blazing Squid and the Toronto Totodiles all day. They are a fan favorite of mine. I legit wear my Toronto Totodile shirt every single chance I get. So there we go. Let's He's go. not wrong, guys. I, I've seen the pictures. He does. And it's funny because I'm always wearing my <laughs> Salt Lake City Swamper shirt. Because they're both so incredible. But let's go ahead and jump into the first pick. The most exciting pick I think I have ever seen big shocker but we have the phoenix sun floors and the return of king arthur with his pick of dragapult with 18 points dude this slide is so clean so oh my gosh shout out to jetman 99 for hooking it up with all the slides you were seeing here guys jetman 99 been in charge of like all of uh, ldl for quite some time now blown it out of the water so excited to see what uh, all these slides, man. These are looking so clean, but no. Um, the way the draft works is we had a total of, I believe, 120 points to draft from 18 point mons all the way down to one. And it's all, all, all the way through the uh, expansion pass, the Isle of Armor expansion pass. And yeah, we have, of course, one of the most impressive and most offensive threats that Sword and Shield has brought us with Dragapult being Ghost Dragon type, an incredible speed stat. I think it's like 123, something outrageously high up there. Yeah, I think it's like one, I, I was just prepping for one. I, if I'm not mistaken, it's like 143. It's ridiculously, oh, so I think the only thing faster in it is probably like Megalopony at one, no, Megalopony is 135, not even. Exactly. It's ridiculously fast. But knowing Arthur and his Dragapult, if you guys followed, well, I don't think anyone followed this on the Showdown League, but he took over for a team that had Dragapult. And Dragapult on both sides of the division, because in that, then you can, you know, it had two different rosters or thing, and you could, two teams could have Dragapult. Both teams made Dragapult the first and the second kill leader. It was ridiculously high. It was. This thing is a monster. It it's, can be especially off offensive or physically offensive. Uh, this thing in the hands of Arthur is like, it's, it's like deadly. Arthur having it's the sword pulled out of the stone. Like the true King Arthur is like, he's returned. Like He has, and we have not seen Arthur in quite some time. Arthur was about to sit this season out, Squid, but two returning coaches, be it you and me, making our return made arthur pick up his crown and he's ready to dust off his switch and make sure that one of us is going to be getting that three-time championship 
under their belts and I think that's literally probably one of the greatest aspects to this season just because we have so many OG people coming back just for that title you me and Arthur I'm gonna love seeing how everyone plays out and where everyone goes but dude the fact that we brought Arthur back just like makes me just oh dude it makes me so happy man you have no idea yeah let's go ahead and uh, just a disclaimer guys we're probably just gonna do a quick like introduction for each coach and then we'll be going through real quick through these picks exactly so you guys don't have to stay here for like two hours <laughs> Uh, hopefully not two hours <laughs> but up next we have the iowa cubs shoes and coach carlos picking up the urshifu single strike form so fighting dark type uh i believe it is known it's the stronger of the two if i'm not mistaken correct uh yes correct i believe if i'm not mistaken i think it has like something that always crits or something something like that yeah, i'm not 100 percent sure and up to date with the whole uh sword and shield meta so if i am very uh unknowledgeable this is a good thing and a bad thing uh but still up there is one of the higher tier mods at 17 points uh really good offensive typing with uh fighting and dark type it does have that four times weakness to very but i mean i think being as powerful as urshifu is um i mean I, I don't see any problems with it i do i will say as a disclaimer we are not allowed to dynamax or gigantamax it is just a full-on draft uh just draft league just using the mods that you have dynamaxing is banned gigantamaxing is banned just because it's a little bit broken if you ask me yeah yeah i did pull it up here it does get it gets wicked blow which is an attack that always crits dude that's so that's like freaking nuts and then ridiculous. It, it is absolutely ridiculous. i i love this mod i i think this got this is a very good solid first pick we mentioned that the whole probably dual dual weakness to fairy not always the greatest but like the typing of what um fighting and dark type i'm not even sure if anything resists well i guess fairy so like, the only weakness really here is fairy, fairy but i'm pretty sure this like any fighting type it gets poison jab so you're gonna have coverage i think this is a solid first pick absolutely Heading uh, heading next is going to be your pick, the Toronto Total Dallas pickup, the monster that is Dragovic. Now, you've had this a couple times, uh, haven't you, Squid? Ah, uh, Dragovic. I, I just, man, ever since I saw Wolfie draft Dragovic, you know, they say I'm bandwagon, and you know what, bro? This bandwagon is going to pull out a W because this thing is a monster. I think it's just, it's ridiculously so good that all you have to do is bring a choice scarf once a week and that makes your opponent prep for it every single week like if you don't prep for a choice scarf jacobish it's it's pretty much gg because i have faced bulky grass types bulky water types and like there's only a very few mods that could really take on jacobish which would be a water absorb bond and hopefully my opponents don't draft that many of them exactly which is uh absolutely scary like of course everyone like laughed at this thing but when she found out the power that was behind dracofish i mean this thing absolutely soared to the top of everyone's uh, draft list and of course you being you you got to get something that chomps with the toronto total dials and i'm very already i'm already super scared to face you already i'm not gonna lie <laughs> Moving on, though, we are moving on to the Neo Show Necrozma and Coach Preston, who has gone and drafted Mew. An excellent pick, a pick that I feel like everyone has to at least try and draft Mew at least once because it can pretty much do anything and everything you want. Being able to learn every single move or uh, move tutor in the game, every TM, every, uh, what do they call them now, RMs or whatever. I can't remember what they call like the breakable ones in uh, Sword and Shield, but no, like if you want this thing offensive, it can be offensive. This thing is, want, you want this thing defensive, defensive. There's so many stally tricks you can pull with Mew that I I feel like it is a very safe and but classic uh, move for Preston because I believe I've seen Preston draft Mew before in the past. Yeah, Preston yeah. did have this at the end of Season 9 where we were doing it on the 3DS. He won a championship. Like he was doing, um, what it was called, what, ma minors. We were majors. They were minors. Preston had, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, either the best season record, and he also won the championship. So um, I've seen this guy use this before. It's ridiculously amazing. Um, base stats 100 all around. You guys know Mew. It's 
it gets one of my favorite moves which is transform because i love ditto and transform so mew getting the access to transform which basically scouts any mon so this thing is just ridiculously amazing plus all the new um the tms that we get this season with like iron defense plus body press it gets cosmic power swords dance what call mine what, what does mew not get exactly what does it not get it does not get vicious rend <laughs> Moving on, though. That's uh, a good one. That's a good one. Moving on, though. We got the Tasmanian Toxicroaks and Max Rapture, who is going to go ahead and draft the Mel Metal. Mel Metal, freaking just a all all round scary scary mon it does unfortunately suffer from a very very slow uh 34 base speed stat but solid steel type 143 attack and defenses this scene can hit like a truck and then throw the truck back at you if it really wants to with double iron bash it gets such a really decent uh coverage with thunder punch as well I mean, I'm, I'm very scared to see like what he pairs this with as uh, the beginning of a Fairy Steel Dragon Core for sure. But I think it's an amazing first pick. Yeah, agreed, man. It, setting this thing um, first thing with a good trick room setter, that's scary. Um, the fact that I can't draft Mega Charizard Y makes it even more scary that I don't have that sun boosted attack to take on to it, it just i'm i'm not sure if you witness this thing getting off it's what is it um the iron bash like double iron bash like it's, choice banded it's monstrous that is ridiculously powerful i think it, it does about minimum half to just about anything ridiculously i think it's a solid wall breaker once again we we're mentioning the speed the speed is not the greatest but once again, in the right trick room and the right setting, say, trick room is a this thing. thing can break through anything. Moving on now, we got the Albany Obama Snows and Coach Blaze, who has drafted the Aegislash. Now, I know Aegislash really well from playing early, early VGC back in the day of uh, X and Y, and Aegislash was, of course, at the very, very top of everyone's list. It was literally the top, I think it was called like the top five or like the perfect five, something like that. But uh, it did get a little bit of a nerf, if I'm not mistaken, uh, heading into Sword and Shield. I think it had a uh, base 10 uh, drop to its stats, but at, it still doesn't mean this thing is an absolute powerhouse. Having such a crazy typing of Steel and Ghost type, a type we, I don't think we've seen anywhere else um, on any other mon, given it uh, the ability to be so offensive and defensive at the same time with its King Shield, I mean, you really have to make sure that you plan carefully if this thing is out on the field because if you do not plan the right move and you hit it shield form your attack's going down bro and then it's gonna hurt you yeah agreed agreed uh very solid pick here uh we know once again it's another slower mod but it's defenses at 140 that's the nerf it went down from 150 to 140 but it's still so so good such a good mod um I think I was watching a video the other day and this guy just set it up behind screens oh and got gosh. to plus six and swept, which was, I was like, what? Of and then course. I was like, yeah, just that easily. This thing, one false move and you could get swept by this thing easily. Easily. Up next, we do have the Winnipeg Jellicents and uh, Coach Matt, another OG uh, LDL player here, picking up Zera Aura. One of the, if not the fastest electric type in the current meta right now. Zera Aura, of course. Very, very powerful. Has access to Volt Absorb. Has access, of course, to Volt Switching. A uh, mod that honestly just fits Matt's playstyle perfectly, I think. I've uh, known Matt for through all the years that we've uh, battled together. He likes his Volt Turn. He really likes his Volt Turn to make sure he has that uh, switch initiative. And Zera Aura definitely provides him that. Gives him a uh, a mon that is well over base 100 speed and also just an absolute powerhouse if he needs it agreed i've i've personally won a championship with zero aura i know how good of a mon this is it's been a few times i've not seen a zero aura carry a team to finals so i have to be so careful of how i what Matt pairs this team up with and how well, but this is such a good solid first pick. If Jacobish wasn't around, I would 100% take a Zero Aura 
it's it's such a fun mod to use if you, you can ask anyone who's ever drafted zero aura that thing is ridiculously fun to use um you were mentioning the speed i i believe if that it's probably slower than drake um Jacob Ball, but it's so it's the fastest electric type in the meta plus plasma fist man and it gets access to bulk up i love the <laughs> combination of just bulk up and plasma fist it's ridiculously amazing i didn't know it got and, bulk up that's scary <laughs> dude plus plus is a great mix mix attacker like you don't have to just always do it on physical exactly exactly and matt can use its shiny form because it was released Hey, is there or shiny? I think is way better than its OG colors. I'm sorry. But moving on, we have the Birmingham Jolts and Coach DJ who has picked up the Urshifu Rapid Strike form. Now, seen as the almost like let quote unquote lesser form of the two Urshifus, Ur Urshifus doesn't mean that this thing isn't still scary. Uh, fire. I mean, water. Wow. Yeah, water and fighting type is such a unique typing. Uh, in regards to just mons in general and the fact that uh, it was all the way down in the 15 point range I think this was honestly a really good steal for DJ for his first pick what do you think uh, yeah I was I was not even sure what the difference was between the two but I was just I pulled it up here it gets what surfing was it called that, that surging surging strikes which is basically like a three time hitting 25 base move um, but it still results in a crit, man. Uh, I, I, I honestly believe that water is probably one of the best typings in Pokemon. It can be like I have Dracovish, who is a monster offensive water type. But then you have stuff like Milotic, who are these bulky, amazing mons like Primarina. I think water is just such a, such an offensive or defensive typing mon. So the fact that this thing gets, you see, this is already an even better, um, I would say, it covers everything. Like, compared to his brother uh, with the, I don't even know, I don't know the difference between the two's name, a single strike, which is, a, you know, super weak to fairy. Well, this mean, one has a water type move, which would be able to take on fairy types, would be able to take on, I don't think there's anything really that could stop it besides a Venusaur, which is resist both of his stabs pretty much and there's uh, not that many grass poison types uh, unless you that. unless you just go back to gen one honestly or maybe throw in amoongus as well but uh I pr it's probably a little bit more confusing squid to see if uh like the difference between them because uh shout out to jetman 99 he misspelled urshifu on this slide so what's up jetman <laughs> moving on <laughs> Up next, this is why he's so excited. <laughs> exactly. We have the New Haven Charizards <laughs> who have picked up Rotom Watch. Uh, Coach, I, I can never pronounce his his name right, and I feel so bad. Zemini, Zeminin? Zeminon. 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 I will never forget that now. I might. Zeminon. But an amazing first pick. Um, Definitely not one I would see as a first round pick, but definitely a mod that could definitely go in the first couple rounds. Uh, Rotom Watch, of course. Always being ranked as one of the highest tier Rotoms. Water Electric type. Has that access to Levitate. Now gets access to Defog. Uh, as of uh, Ultra Sun and Moon if I'm not mistaken. So all around very good typing. Uh, really good resistances. Because it has no res I mean, uh, I'm Really good with the weaknesses. Because it has no weaknesses. Um, Volt Switcher. I mean, I've, I've used this mod before. You've used this mod before. I feel like everyone that has wanted a draft team has use this pokemon at one time or point yeah um like you were mentioning probably a little bit too early but i can't say anything because i picked up zydog first round and people made fun of me and then boom championship so without a without a doubt rotom watch such a good it's a good typing we know it's only got one weakness which would be a grass unless you're facing a mold breaker cough cough we'll find out later and then um so yeah, they, once you have that, that that grass weakness and then your other two cores for a fire, water, grass core being fire and grass type, that's already two more resistance that pairs so nicely with Rotom Wash. That's why Rotom Wash is such a phenomenal first pick. Not because to, if you're going for a core right off the bat, I don't think 
there's any other water type that's better to get a core than this thing right here especially with that that vault switch this thing is it's it's really good i honestly and... hate this thing i honestly hate it because it's so bulky at times it can be bulky you can go ahead and throw a choice scarf or a choice specs on it ha and throw on trick on there if you really want to uh damage any or uh stop any walls from uh, doing any type of shenanigans on their end exactly or this thing could just be a wall itself in toxic salia you know it, or or even willow wispia because it just can because it just can so uh i actually like the pick um i'm excited to see what uh Zeminen pairs it up with up next though we have my first pick and the Salt Lake City Swampers picked up Hydreigon. Squid, do you want to talk about this first? Hydreigon. First of all, if you guys haven't watched the... It's probably the last video on CLTPG, but basically Arthur versus DJ. You need to watch that video before we even talk about Hydreigon. Because that thing gave DJ a championship. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is so good. I hate the fact that this thing has a 98 base um, speed stat. So it's like... <sighs> I always try to speed creep it with my Charizard just because... But I, I only can spare so many points. But I love its typing. The Dragon Dark type. It's another another one. Like it's The only weakness is Fairy. But this thing gets Flash Cannon. <sighs> can we talk about the buff that it gets Nasty Plot? Yes. Like, um, no, hello. I believe. Like, why did why did they give this thing nasty plot? Absolutely... Like, I remember watching the Soul Link, and they, you know, it just so happened that Hydreigon got nasty plot. And I think like Game Freak was like, oh, did you guys watch that shady nappy Soul Link? They, you know, they modified it so they can learn nasty plot. Let's give it to Hydreigon. That is a terrible idea. Um, <laughs> I think it is an amazing idea because, you know, it is mine. It is under my roof, and I'm going to take this one with... I, there's not a single stat that drops below base 90. Let's begin with that, Squid. Not to mention that not only does this thing get access to Nasty Plot now, if I so choose, I can run Dragon Dance on this thing as well. This thing gets there. access to both. I hope not. This thing gets access to both. But like it, like like you said as well, it has access to flash cannon, so I have a decent coverage for my one huge times four weakness. I have access to roost in case I get damaged. I have access to U-turn. Like this thing is an all-around powerhouse. Like people have to plan so cautiously around this thing just because it does hit so hard that this mod can honestly bring back anyone in the slump or just completely sweep if it so chooses. And so. I personally love it. I feel like it's going to be an amazing asset to the team. Um, I will say, I like I wasn't really going into the draft so much, uh, thinking too much of what I wanted after this. But you know, you know, you know we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But up yeah. next, uh, still so, solid great pick. Solid great pick. I think it's it's a pivotal mon. It's a defogger. It's an offensive threat. Uh, what is what is it not? It is not. Single-minded. I don't know. <laughs> Up next, we have scared. the Lakewood Trevenants and Coach Beard. The return of the Beard with Volcarona. Oh, my gosh. Beard Beard knows how to have fun with some wands, I feel. And no matter even if he's super competitive or he's not competitive, Beard just, just loves certain wands. And I feel like Volcarona is definitely up there on his list. Volcarona such an impressive mon yes it does have that times four weakness to rocks however volcarona don't care about no rocks baby volcarona is gonna come in and it's just going to ruin your entire day because this thing just fiery dances gets a boost and you're done for like seriously like what more this mon is super slept on because of that because everyone's like oh times four weakness to rocks move along no 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 uh -uh. no you th this thing's an absolute powerhouse um I've wanted to use it in draft leagues, but I, once again, I've, I've been one of those people that's shied away from it. But what do you think about this first pick? I, I think this is a great pick, first round pick, uh, especially now that the new meta has allowed heavy duty boots. I guess so many people are complaining about hazards that now they, they added it. So like Volcarona can come into a game and not even worry about stealth rocks. That's, that's scary. 
That's saying something. That is very, very scary. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now rounding off the end of round one, we're going to go over to the Victorville Victinis and Coach Spartan275 picking up Jirachi. Solid first pick, in my opinion. Uh, Jirachi, once again, kind of like those one of those mods that usually uh, you see more so defensive, but it has an amazing... Uh, just stats all around being base 100 being one of those mythical mons of course but um access to outrage iron head flinches uh with that serene grace ability doubling the percentages of all secondary effects i mean this thing can honestly put in some good work but it can also set up stealth rocks and you turn out if you need it for that uh capabilities what do you think about this pick the fact that it's going at the end of round one There, squid. Was it my turn? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is your turn. Okay, my bad. Uh, so yeah, Jirachi. Uh, yeah, you basically covered it, man. It's a great base all 100 all around mine at 17 points. I, I think, it, yeah, it belongs up there. Access to Stealth Rocks. This thing gets access to Wish. Gets access to Moonblast. Gets access to... Th that Serene Grace Iron Head is... <sighs> that's something else. Because I've been in moments on the other side where I'm getting that 60% flinch almost every time. So this thing is very, very obnoxious. Can be. Um, the bulk that it has is ridiculously amazing. Uh, steel typing is it's, it's so good. The steel typing. And especially if you can use it to complete a solid Dragon Fairy Steel Core. Even better. But yeah, no, this thing... I, I love Jirachi. I've drafted it before. This thing eats hits for days. This thing can dish out hits for days. I, I think it's an amazing first pick for her and Tony here. Absolutely, in the end of round one, but we're literally gonna go, just jump right back into his pick because he got the wheel pick to pair up that Jirachi. He's going for the flinch core with picking up Togekiss. How do you feel about this, dude? Like, I, it's, it, it's so obvious, but you can't believe it every time it happens. It's like, there's no way we allowed him to do this. I, <laughs> uh, this is going to be an interesting season, man. Like, dude, both Mons get access to Thunder Wave and both Mons have Serene Grace. And I, I hope nobody gets flinched to death, especially we're, since we're playing on Land Timer. So like, you know, the animations are not going to drag you on. It's all he has to do is make sure Thunder Wave is first and then make sure Air Slash or Iron Head is second. But I think this is a really, really solid pick. Um, he just added a defogger to his team. Once again, the heavy duty boots Togekiss. I've been watching MV use that thing. It, it's so, so good. Um, I love it. I truly do love it. The defog, uh, the baton pass, both months getting access to Wish. Um, man, I, I think this is this is a solid two picks to make a steel um, and fairy. And let's see what he combines it for a dragon man. I'm really interested in seeing that. Absolutely. We're going to jump back to Beard, who is going to pick up the big boy of Orilla Boom. Now, I have been Grookey Gang since day one. I'm super happy that he went ahead and paired uh, up <laughs> Volcarona with Orilla Boom because of the fact that it does get access to its hidden ability now of being able to set up the grassy terrain, which will definitely benefit Volcarona. Uh, being able to come on the field if it does take rocks damage well it doesn't matter it can start getting uh earthquakes uh damage resisted number one and number two it can start getting uh health back as well not to mention real boom is an absolute tank of a mon hitting you it's almost like a like i seriously want to compare it to a nido king squid that is how i feel about real boom well that's that's big talk coming from you, man, because uh, Needle King won you a championship. Mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. So and that thing is uh, such a powerhouse. But yeah, uh, I guess this is my first snipe of the game so far because I was really eyeing Rillaboom and I did not expect it to go just round two like that. But yeah, that grassy surge, um, now that it has the healing ability activated, is so good. Uh, plus the grassy, um, grassy slide is a side, side slide. I know it's something like that. Slide, grassy slide think, or something like that. I think it's slide. I feel like I've watched the move a hundred times and I still don't know the name. Uh, but yeah, the, giving the priority in the grassy terrain is really, really good. 
Um, this thing is it's a monster. It's a tax that is really good. It's got good speed. If I'm not mistaken, it's like 85. But yeah, as you were mentioning, that, that grassy surge is really going to complement the Volcarona, getting those nice, like, leftovers worth of health back every single turn that the grassy terrain is up. I really like this combo. It's a good, um, we're getting a fire grass cord. I just need to see what his water type is going to be. I'm excited. These guys are already going for cores. Absolutely. Speaking of cores, I'm going to go ahead and pick up Clefable to go along with my wow. High Dragon. Now, originally, I'm not going to lie, I did have a different fairy type in mind. I was originally going to go for uh, Mimikyu. But then I recalled back to his previous season of Matt having Mimikyu. <laughs> I do not want to miss any play refs when it matters, okay? Especially four or five in a row. I don't want that to happen to me. I think I will actually break my Switch. And so I saw um, Clefable on the screen, uh, on the table, and I'm like, it is a little bit higher points of Amon, but I've, I've, I've had my fair share of having to deal with this Mon and having to battle it many, many times, especially when Arthur has had it. It's my turn, goddammit. It really is. <laughs> I'm, uh, stealth Rocks, Wish Passing, uh, access to... Uh, unaware as well as uh what is it the one that uh, ignores uh toxic uh, magic guard uh, magic guard and all that stuff as well so i think it's an all-around fan fantastic pick a bulky mon to help support my high dragon for a fairy dragon steel core and i'm i, I mean i have i have no issues with this because it's my team <laughs> what do you feel about uh clefable being here uh i um it's a mon that really annoys me i always have a hard time breaking through this thing um yeah you know it makes your opponent like myself have to bring stealth rocks and also have to bring you see this is why i don't like heavy duty boots because now if you come in on stealth rocks holding a stuff to be i'm gonna say this thing is um the the what is it magic guard mm -hmm. and then little am i gonna know that he's actually unaware but he's just rocking boots and because I usually either bring Toxic or I bring Rocks. Try, try, you know, you try to, these little techniques to try to find out what sets Clefable might be. And now with these new items and meta changing, it's kind of becoming more difficult. Clefable is such, it's a really good mod. I really do enjoy it. If I'm not mistaken, it actually, uh, you can run Teleport on it now too. So that's yes, a sir. good um, yes, can. pivotal mod right there. Especially since the fact it can take hits. So it's also like probably even wish teleport if i'm not mistaken and stuff like that so i think this is a really really solid pick not letting go into the hands of arthur i prefer that than absolutely <laughs> him having it honestly and oop, i went the wrong way moving on now we have the new haven charizards gonna go ahead and pair up that rotom wash with a lola nine tails now a pairing that is ironically uh very close to his uh, team mascot with uh, Charizard. Like we've definitely seen the pairing, especially with my winning season of Rotom Wash, Alolan Ninetales, and Mega Charizard X. So to see these two pairing together makes perfect sense to me. Uh, the Ice and Fairy type is absolutely phenomenal. It's one of the best Alolan mons of all time. Uh, being able to immediately set up that Aurora Veil with that Snow Warning ability, uh, giving it both both screams. For as many turns as you want because it, they never seem to go away after a certain point being able to allow any mon to come in swap out get health back set up on you destroy your life that is alola nine tails set up for you yeah alola nine tails fantastic mon uh if, when i'm mistaken like what base 109 speed it's so that's a really fast, good yeah. speed tier right there adding to his team uh it's a fairy type not you know it's not the most offensive fairy type but the fact that it gets hail and it gets that aurora veil it's it really puts it up there I, it puts it as a good mod and nine points that is very budgetable man that is like it's saving you tier. so much like i remember and giving you a lot i remember back when the tiers were like one two three four five this was easily tier two if not tier one at times yeah and i'm not sure if you've ever faced a choice specs blizzard man it's I have. it hits I have, I've used one. But up next, uh, DJ and the Birmingham Jilts are going to pick up the all-important Savali. 
I, I hate this pick so much because it works so well because Diwali can just do whatever you want it to. It has defog. It has... Oh my god, I hate this thing so much, Squid. You have to talk about it because you've used it. I hated you when you use it. You have to you just talk about it. I hate this pick. Yeah, so Volley being any typing, ridiculously good. It fills in any spot. I've drafted it before. If this thing, well, it's base 95 all around. So it's like, it's almost like at Mew level, but not necessarily. Um, parting sh shot, pff, fantastic. I hate it. Um, pretty sure it gets U-turn. Not, not that many people use U-turn when you can use parting shot, but the, the multi-attack, I love multi-attack. That thing is such a great um, move that they've given this its spawn. And like, it never and sometimes dies. you don't even have to like, even bring a typing. You could just bring it oh, with the memory. You could just bring a choice scarf, which gives you it so much dies. momentum. It never dies, that's the problem. It was, it's, a, it's a mistake of nature and it never dies because of it. That is Savali. <laughs> Up next, uh, though, we are going to go into the Winnipeg Jellicent. Zara Aura paired up with Corviknight. Matt in the Winnipeg Jellicent. I think this is an incredible pick. Such an amazing combination. Zara Aura, the only weakness it has is that ground typing. And Corviknight has an immunity to it. Not to mention, it is such a bulky and powerhouse of a threat. Uh, I think this is like a really good combination here for uh, Matt to start off with, for sure. Yeah, agreed, agreed. This is a, a solid combination. I, I think the chat was kind of going off. As soon as he drafted these two, it was like, oh, shoot. Like, they can see the synergy coming off with this. Um, like, it's it's already, like, this is, like, on a championship team kind of level. As you were mentioning, they, they complement each other so well. Um, I eat. And Corviknight, I've, I've seen what Corviknight can do. Um, it's another mod that gets body press. Um, it's a fast taunter. I think it's like its base speed is in the 80s. Mm -hmm. So it's already faster than Skarmory, which is the same typing. Um, solid defogger. Roos. The bulk up. It's, this is a solid, solid good mod. I, I think this thing led, lived my Charizard Life Force flamethrower the other day. And I was, I was so annoyed. But this <laughs> thing is so bulky. It's so good. And it looks amazing on screen. <laughs> but moving on, we are going to see the Albany Obama Snow pick up Teraki on the pair up with Aegislash. Um, I like this pick. I almost went with Terrakion for my first pick and built my team around Terrakion. However, I did go against it eventually, of course. But Terrakion, all around amazing pick. Has access to that Justified boost, which definitely helps out Aegislash in the long run. Being able to tank any dark type attack and then get a plus two with its uh justified or is it plus one i think it's plus one i can't remember cool. uh yeah i feel like i have a love hate relationship with terrakion just because he misses his whatsoever mm -hmm. and what just happened you're good. You're good. I just reset it. See what happened. Uh, you just reset it. Okay. Yeah, cool. Just see, so, it, here. Okay. see if it pops. So, eh, what was I? Mrs. Stone Edge. I hope it doesn't do that. And then, uh, but no, I, I think it's it's so tricky to prepare for this thing, in my opinion, because yes, its move set is a little bit more limited, but at the same time, its setup is where you need to like be cautious of, because it could be choice scarf, it could be choice. Yeah, its setup is right there. It's what it's a or base 108 speed. Base 108 speed. Uh, but if you want it to be just super offensive, then you then you bring the swords dance because you can outspeed things. Or you know what? If it, if you can knock everything out without the uh, added attack, then just keep, bring yourself some agility, dude. Agility is there on this thing, if I'm not mistaken, and it's a. It's super scary because once that thing is at plus two speed, nothing's gonna outspeed it, number one. And you gotta sacrifice at least one to two mons to really start to break this thing down. And by then, you your game just might be over. And so, <laughs> you know, uh, I feel like it's a really good pick with Aegislash for sure. Like I said, the uh, Justified Boost is there. All 
ground amazing pick. There is a bit of a ground weakness there, so I will definitely like to see how Blaze covers that in the future. But moving on, we're going to go ahead and see the Tasmanian Toxicroaks pick up Azuril as his fairy type to match up with that Mel Metal. And oh my god, dude. Do you want to... You said it last time when Mel Metal was here. Wall Breaker. These are Wall Breakers. <laughs> this is such a scary team already to prep for on the physical side. Just because Mel Metal already could break things. Azumarill with Belly Drum set up just with huge power in general now is even worse. And not to mention now that he ha now has access to Aqua Jet and Super Power. And I believe this thing now gets uh, uh, Liquidation as well, so the lower your defense is. Pair that with Mel Metal. I mean, there's really nothing that could honestly stand up to these guys. Yeah, no, I get you. Uh, agreed. Um, you know, Mel Metal's what weakness was fire. Uh, I'm pretty sure this thing gets thick fat. So that's like already an, like adding more resistance onto a fire tag attack. You mentioned it. It's a wall breaker. It's this team. <laughs> oh man, I, I don't know if I have anything on my team that I actually want to take to take a hit from any guys. But I've had Azu before. Azu is so good. We were mentioning, you know, if Mel Metal had a good Trick Room user, I think this team already is screaming Trick Room already. <laughs> Pretty much. Like with the speed that these twos are at and like and don't get me wrong, because you can run a speedy Azu, which can catch you off guard one hundred percent. But man, once again, adding a solid, solid trick room user that's very supportive, this team is so nasty. I, I don't even want to face it. Neither do I. Neither do I. Uh but up next we have the Neo Show Necroma picking up uh Feral Thorn as I expect to pair up with Mew. And I see just had I see just see uh, Hazard stack and the bulk already here between these two. Very good synergy, very good play off of each other. Uh, Feral Thorn, of course, the beginning of a uh, Firewater Grass, Fairy Dragon Steel Core. Uh, the Iron Barb's ability just makes it extra, extra bulky to try and hit on the physical side. Um, I just think it is a really good uh, pick to jump off of from Mew. I don't really know where he's really going with uh, where Preston's going with this team right now, just more so I see hazard stacking and just uh, longevity for Mons right now, but I'm interested to see what more is coming. What do you think about this pick? Um, I think this puts his defenses at over 100. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, <laughs> um, you know, it's a solid, solid Mon. I, I love... We have hazard stacking here now, like 100%. I've I've drafted Ferrothorn before. Super, super good mod. I, I I love its typing. Um, you know, now it's like it's only got one weakness, fire type, um, which you can really complement that with about any water type, anything that gets flash fire. Um, I love this pick. I, I genuinely do love this pick. Uh, fact, it gets some um, body press, makes it so much better. Um, gyro ball is so good. I, I think Preston knows what he's doing, and I don't like what he's cooking up here. Yeah, neither do I. Neither do I. But now we get back up to you. You were mentioning mold breakers a little bit earlier, Squid. Um, were you per were you perhaps pertaining to an Excadrill to pair with Dracovic? <laughs> yeah, dude. I am so happy I had this pick. I, I think I was scared it wouldn't come back to me. Uh, I've never actually used... Have I used Extra Joe before? I have not. I have not used Extra Joe, but as a Sandrush mod, this thing is so good. Um, it gives me... It gives me a lot of incentive because, like we were mentioning, that Rotom wash. Now I have Mold Breaker on my back. Um, I wanted a Solid Steel type that also had Mold Breaker. I think, actually, I just wanted something that got Mold Breaker. And the best thing out there is extra Joe, especially with the buff that Rapid Spin has now a days. Mm -hmm. Plus one speed. You don't even like, need sand at that point if you choose not to do that. You just have to. I, yeah, I don't even need sand. Like Mold Breaker plus extra Joe, Life Orb. There are very few things that I actually want to take on this mod. There are few things that want to go up against that and Dracovich together. I think it's an incredible. A very unexpected uh, beginning to a, a Dragon Steel Fairy Core. I think it's an amazing mon, excellent rapid spinner, 
excellent ground type. You mentioned Old Anchor. I hate your team already, dude. I really do. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and see the Iowa Cup choose. Pick up Rotom Heat, the almost uh, always considered, in my opinion, kind of the second place of the Rotoms. Um, electric Fire type, so not as powerful as uh, Rotom Wash, but still can basically do everything else that Rotom Wash can do. So it gets access to Overheat instead of Hydro Pump, so everything I really mentioned before really does apply here, but, com uh, but paired with the Urshifu single, I say it adds a lot because I believe it just allows uh, more swapping in and out of that Urshifu single to get a, uh, get that single strike out, get the hell out, bring Rotom Heat back in, little some stuff down, toxic stuff, uh, will wisp potentially defog, just make sure Urshifu is able just to come in in Wreck House. Yeah, I, I think it's a really solid pick. He's already covering his weaknesses. We were mentioning that, you know, Fairy being that one weakness for that Urshifu single. Um, so I, I think this is a great pick. I actually, I wanted Rotom Heat for myself. Uh, this thing is bulky with the boots. It's so good. Gets access to Defog, as you were mentioning, and the will o -Wisp. And, you know, it's just like another Rotom Wash. But, you know, I, I think it's probably considered the second best. Um, I always see if Rotom Wash goes, Rotom Heat is kind of going soon after that. Um, Absolutely. But I love this pick. I, I generally do. I, I know it only gets one fire type move with, like, just overheat but it's so good because you can overheat and volt switch out without a problem Absolutely. and this thing gets nasty plot oh yeah that's a thing now i totally forgot <laughs> moving on uh but now we have uh arthur coming back around for the wheel pick his first of uh two pick first of his two picks heading in ending round two and beginning round three is going to be scissor to pair with dragapult and what a pick i've use scissor to 60 him before and i feel like this is kind of bittersweet irony that i picked up clefable and he picked up scissor if i'm gonna be honest but no scissor very very awesome on we've both used scissor tremendous amounts of times throughout the years of ldl i mean there's bullet punch knockoff bug bite after it got its huge buff uh swords dance roost stalt sets i mean this thing like is scared like, this speed is not the best we'll, we'll be straight up but you let this thing set up on you and nothing's gonna stop it yeah no uh solid solid pick um i'm already i'm like i'm looking and i'm like okay so like do, does he have any weaknesses and he's like nope he's already covered his weaknesses in two mons <sighs> this is gonna be a hard season it will be very very hard season Arthur has come to play but <laughs> scissor i've also used scissor before in my past uh, choice banded it's so good this thing it's another mon that you can either run offensive or defensive without a problem it's a it's a defogger it's a rooster it's a pivotal mon um you know when a mon is fogger and a pivotal mon it's always so so good uh the priority bullet punch as we were mentioning uh, it gets access to storage dance it, it's so good uh, this is a great pick especially in the hands of Arthur. Yikes. He'll know, he'll know how to utilize this mod every single week, fit the perfect set to it just to make sure that you just hit up a little bit more. But if that wasn't enough, let's go ahead and see who he pulled it up. Oh, he paired it up with Sylveon to complete his core. Ain't that wow. shocking. Of course he went Sylveon. A mod that Arthur, I swear to God, knows better than any other person in this world. Like seriously, like... I cannot, remember, I cannot tell you how many times I hated Arthur. Like, legit for days on end. Back when, you know, we used to honestly be salty about Pokemon. <laughs> this thing, the way Arthur loves to use it is the Wish Pass, Wish Baton Pass, Wish Stall. But like I said, like with Savali, that doesn't die. Sylveon, don't get me wrong, it's one of my favorite fairy types. Top 2 Eeveelations, hands down. Yeah, um, man, this is Paired such a great, great pick. As you were mentioning, to complete his core, I, I love it. Um, and in the hands of Arthur, it's it's so scary because it's one of those people that you're trying to you're gonna bring like that throat chop, thinking it's gonna be that pixelate hyper voice, and he's gonna be prepared for it, and he's gonna run his the other ability, which is cute charm, I believe, and like just hit you with boom blast. 
So it's such a threat in the right hands, and I think it's in the perfect hands, which is which makes it even worse. And you think he's gonna swap out to his sword because you bring in your own still type? No, this thing gets mystical fire now, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it does. So it now has wonderful coverage for weakness and mystical fire on a Sylveon life orb specs. You know it's gonna be doing something absolutely crazy amount of damage because you know what Arthur is just that type of guy and we are moving on because I'm sick to my stomach now thinking about his core <laughs> but slow bro is gonna go ahead and uh, get picked up by the cup shoes I like this pick a lot slow bro is a mon that has brought me lots of victories and I love the fact that it's so viable even after its galarian form it's made its appearance that regenerator ability is just too powerful given that it's a third of its health back every time you swap out. All around good Stallimon. You can run it physically defensive, specially defensive. It don't matter. Slowbro's here to really just mess up the day. And you know what? If you just want to, you know, really have some fun with it, put some put a fire blast on it. Seriously, slap yeah, off Skull. Um, <laughs> Scald. Love this pick. I really do. It pairs really well with this team as well. Yeah, um here uh here's his fire water type. It's really good synergy between to um slow bro tank hits that regenerator fantastic um the fact it gets teleport fantastic um i love i love the water psychic typing it's really it really really complements it very very well this thing is so bulky i hate it so much i've lost games too it's mm -hmm. can we just move on yeah no worries no worries no yeah we'll, we'll fly through that but Oh, oh that's to get to yourself. You are an ass a little bit. I I didn't I didn't even notice. Necrozma, man, what does Necrozma not do? Necrozma does Base. does basically a little bit of everything now. It's it's list of setup moves at this point is honestly really scary. I believe it gets access to Dragon Dance. It gets access to uh what's it called? Gear grind, I think, or something like that, right? Or something to double its speed. Agility. Yeah, it gets automized. 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 That's right. Automized. Automized. Why is that automized? Yeah, automized. Access uh, to yeah. Mind. I believe Nasty Plot is weak at this point. I don't think you got Nasty Plot. Thank God. So Calm Mind, Dragonance, Automized. You can set up rocks. Photon Geyser de chooses the lesser of your defenses to attack on. Squid, why'd you choose this mod? I, I think it's just not a good pick at all. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's a bad pick too, honestly. Bad pick, yeah, but no, the stealth rocks, the the as you were mentioning, the automize. I, I think the the thing that ever that forever sold me on a Krosma, it is move the photon geyser. Photon geyser like breaks through any ability. So let's say I am Swords Dance and he brings in a unaware Clefable. He's still gonna be taking a plus two photon geyser. It's a great mod, so I'm just trying to break through any kind of walls, any type of abilities with my extra drill mold breaker and necrozma. You try you trying to say Clefable in particular because it's my mod? Hmm? Moving on. <laughs> we got Venusaur pairing up here with the Neo Show Necrozma. Very interesting. Back to back grass types here, but um I actually am very confused at this. 10 points, so he dropped down a little bit here for Preston to pick this mon. Was this by chance like a miss pick or a, like a backup pick that Preston might have messed up? Uh, I don't know. I actually, I'm not 100% sure what was going on here. I, I think Venusaur was probably a little bit too early. Once you pick up Venusaur, especially in this format, it's kind of telling you that you're, he's probably going to be drafting Sun later on that's what i was thinking too because venusaur's got a great a great wide range of movesets on physical and special side to do whatever you honestly want i mean it's got it has it's super excellent in the sum on the physical side <coughs> excuse me Ooh, earthquake i believe knockoff as well um i think it actually gets earth power too i want to say that it a does thing. it does yeah, so like even especially offensive now, this thing has more viability to be more of a mix set if you choose. So planning for this thing is definitely going to be difficult, especially now that he has a Mew that can set up Sun that is guaranteed because Mew can learn anything. 
but I'm definitely more interested to see how he copes with the fact he chose two fire, I mean, two grab mon back to back. I'm interested to see how this, uh, balances out here. Yeah, um, agreed. A little confused as well to see back to back grass types. Like, it's, I think, the first time I ever see it. But, uh, <coughs> oh, God, 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 God. um, <laughs> He drafted Kiram to go with the uh, round of Fairy Dragon Steel Core, and yeah, this is a team of wall breakers. This is a core of wall breakers. Kiram, Kiram Black is banned. Kiram White absolutely banned. Uh, shocked to see Kiram Black banned, but I understand it with the current meta. But Kiram by itself, so many people estimated Kiram in its big form. Even though it's fastest, this thing still hits so incredibly hard and is so such a pain in the butt to plan for. Because it can just be such a bulky, like, dub roost set, or, and it's just coverage is out of this world. Like, anything you try to bring for this thing, it has coverage for, and you basically try to pull any shenanigans. He's got Mel Metal in the uh, there, and I think this is probably one of the scariest cores we have in the draft so far, Squid. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Um, like,. <laughs> I, I just like you look at these and you're like, wait, what? Like, how did this even happen? And then it's like, how did we allow this to happen? You know, it's it's one of those teams that now I'm like, I have to be super worried because I, bro, like you think of any weakness and another mod just covers it very, very well. But I, I give 100% props to Max Rapture here, picking up these very three solid, solid picks. Um, he doesn't have anything over 100 base speed so far. So that's like where I kind of like relax a bit. Like it's like, okay, they're not super fast wall breakers. They're still wall. And like if he adds webs, then it's like, okay, I really, really prep. But I love this deal fairy dragon here 100%. It's a, it's a good one. It's a really, really solid. I'm really interested to see his battles this season. I'm actually, this is probably one coach I'm definitely going to be close attention to. But up next, we're going to have, let's see, how is that not going? We have the Albany Obama Snows picking up Seismitoad. Uh, Seismitoad is an amazing Pokemon, of course, only having um, one weakness to grass. He it immediately Blaze went ahead and picked up uh, an incredible. Uh, answer for his ground weakness for his Aegislast and Terrakion. Very counter rain team as well. Seismitoad does get access to Swift Swim, but Seismitoad is such a fun mon to use because it's so different from all the other um, ground water types outside of Mega Swampert, if you ask me. Just because, uh, kind of like Mega Swampert, uh, Seismitoad just has that ability to be offensive but extra bulky at the same time, usually with mons like. Gastrodon, Quagsire, they're there to be the bulk. Well, Seismitoad can be the bulk, and it can drain punch you, get your health back, Toxic Salia, and just ruin your day. I really like this pick. I feel it, it's a very, for the amount of points he used, it is a mon that fits his team perfectly. Yeah, I, I like this pick too. I was looking at Edge Slash, and I was looking at Terrakion, and I was like, dude, I can just fish his rend these mods. And then I see Seismitoad and I'm like, okay, now I can't fish his rent all these bonds. So I think he was just trying to counter me. I could be wrong, Blaze, you let me know. But no, Seismitoad, fantastic, fantastic mon. Um, it's always been a mon that you can either run physically or especially offensive. You can run it bulky, as you were mentioning. It's only got one weakness, being grass. Uh, it kind of sucks because Terrakin is also weak to grass, but Edge Slash is there. So like, it's now he's kind of making space for like his weaknesses which I, I like and he's not using too many points which is really good so now he has two solid rockers interacting in seismic toad um sting gets poison touch I'm, i think i feel like it gets poison touch for some reason or poison jab i know it's but i think it's a sure. really really solid pick here really solid pick as a water type a bulky water type speaking of water types i feel this pokemon does it get flip turn I wonder if that gets flip turn. It just might. I'm more than willing to bet it, it will. Speaking of flip turn, Keldio does get it. And what, what a core. What an actually not even a core. This is synergy here. This, this is, is synergy. just radiating super sane. 
And for the amount of points that Keldeo is worth, I mean, welcome back to Keldeo. I feel like Keldeo is honestly going to shine in the singles meta here more than ever, just because a lot of uh, reasons for Keldeo being bad or like walls that Ke that were there for Keldeo are gone now. And Keldeo, like you said, has such great synergy in regards to Zero Aura and Corviknight. Like, uh, like I said before, Matt likes his switching, and now he has Flip Turn with Keldeo. He has Zero Aura with Volt Switch, and I don't believe Corviknight gets a swap move, but I mean, it's still Corviknight that can definitely help out and cover the weaknesses that, ever, that the other two mons have. Yeah, uh, synergy off this team is off the chart. Um... And with an incredible this thing, I, I'm pretty sure this Keldeo gets Calm Mind. It does. Which oh yeah, it does. That makes it so so nice. Um, 108 speed. Um, just his team is already averaging about like over over the hundreds, if I'm not mistaken. Just between those three picks, um, you know, Keldeo and Zero Aura are a bit fragile, but he has so many points, so like he can do he can play with those. Um, he could play around this team. Like, this could be a core, and the other three mons just really just complement it. And, dude, it's I really like the synergy coming off this, this team, this 100%. Is, this is definitely a Matt-centric team, and I'm excited to see what else he builds around it for sure. Up next, so we have the Birmingham Jolts bringing in the boy, the one, the only, the Incineroar. Very crazy to see Incineroar go, go so early. Round three, Squid. I feel like this was such an early pick, and it had me worried for picking uh, fire types for the remainder of the uh, the draft. I even told you this, you know, in our private chats that you know fire types are gonna start going after this. Just watch. And to see Incineroar go so early was very scary. But Incineroar, while not the fastest, of course, has access to a great range of uh, moves. Fake out. Uh, Swords Dance, if I'm not mistaken, uh, can be physical, can be special. Of course, has that incredible Intimidate ability, which does definitely help out the longevity of uh, Mons as well. And just Darkest Lariat, being able to break through any type of uh, boost at all times, makes it hit like a truck, no matter what. And I really think that having a Dark type with knockoff is probably one of the core centric things that is needed for singles draft uh, Pokemon leagues and I feel like Incineroar fits the bill very very nicely uh, yeah it's fitting in nicely so far um, you know I, I think I won't forget when Incineroar came out with Intimidate you know that mod just like its usage just bumped all the way up um, I love, love its ability, mind. or not the ability, but the the move Darkest Lariat, that which goes through any stat boost. So like it's kind of like a crit, but not like a crit, because it just goes ignore all those stat boosts. I think this is a great mod as well. Um, it's getting U turn, um, its ability to get knock off. You know how how crucial knock off is in the meta of draft league format. Absolutely. Um, really really solid pick i i love this pick and i love the what ball. better coach than than you know this is like dude i have to face the DJ way that one victini is to squid that's like this is his victini i have to face this my is dj's victini week one i have to face dj week one here i have to face my mascot <laughs> Coming up next, we have the New Haven Charizard picking up Scolipede. This is very, very cool to see Scolipede and Alolan Ninetales paired up because having access to the screens allows Scolipede to set up endlessly. Access to that speed boost uh, ability and then having access to Swords Dance. Scolipede's going to set up on you. I'm sorry, that is what is going to happen. And if you don't think that your Pokemon are going to be poisoned or burned from Rotom Wash before it happens, you're wrong. Scolipede is definitely going to be probably uh, Zeminin's top league, uh, top team killer. I'm calling it right now. It'll be top 10 for the league, and it'll be his top uh, top killer. I know a little trick around this, uh, but I'm not going to reveal my my hand online. You guys are going to have to find out when I face Zeminon. But um, super solid. I love the... the the game plan that he has going on here, as you were mentioning, just behind those the, those screens, Scolipede, 
you know, I've always had an issue with speed boosting mons, especially this thing. Like a simple, if you're not running priority and this thing is running a focus sash and starts source dancing, it's, it's going to put in a couple dents. I've seen this thing like run endeavor focus sash. So like you could think you're safe and that thing will endeavor you down to one HP. I think this is a really solid pick. Um, did it go too early? Uh, I'm not 100% sure because of the whole roster cut, but I think I, I really love this pick, especially for Zeminon here. Um, I think he is going to use it to the best ability and he's going to put us uh, in a world of hurt. Absolutely. Now, I, speaking of speed. Speaking of speed. <laughs> Dude, I was so surprised to see this as low points as it was. Down in five points. Five right? points? Five points. I was able to pick up Jolteon to ha actually start to add some speed and give me give my team uh, one of those mods that's over base 100 and to start just building uh, just things around just to make my team shine in the play styles I really like and know. Jolteon is definitely one that fits that. I uh, used it very, very early on in the league. I want to say season four or season two even. Very, very early on. But, uh, yeah, Jolteon just does basically almost everything Zera Ore does, just on the special side. I mean, it's a Volt, it's a volt Absorber, it's a Volt Switch Mon. I can dry Baton Pass, which is amazing in my opinion. And, you know, Jolteon does its one job, being fast, and it's Electric type, but it does it really, really well. But the thing I also like about it is that its secondary ability in, uh, I think, what's it called? Quick Feet? Yeah. Quick feed where its speed doubles if it has a status, which is absolutely incredible. Because do you think this mon's fast now? Wait till this thing is poisoned or burned. More so burned now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, but yeah, tell I me about it. <laughs> I, I think I faced the Jolteon on the other day, and I was like, that was the one thing I was trying not to do. I was not getting on my toxic spikes because if it was, he was already running choice specs. So Ooh. if I would have given that quick speed boost, I would have been GG. That literally would have been GG, but yeah, this thing absolutely hits like a truck. Um, being able to throw out Thunderbolts, of course. Uh, I like using Discharge now because of just that paralysis potential. Uh, and yeah, I think it's just a solid fit for my team. It's an electric type that I needed, uh, and, and I'm kind of like. I think the only nerf I didn't like that they they, they it lost um synchronize. It did. That that was a, a little bummer for me, but still, Jolteon is a fantastic pick though, regardless. For five points, absolutely. <laughs> but speaking of another electric type, uh, Beard went ahead and picked up Magnazone. Magnazone, oh my god, I love me some Magnazone. Uh, another mon that definitely benefits from Rilla Boom's uh, grassy terrain, They're taking that times four weakness and minimizing the damage to it just quite a bit. Uh, this another low tier mon with nine points. Magnazone absolutely hits like an absolute truck. I used this thing on a rain team. I believe it was for PGL, if you remember that season squid. Uh, and Magnazone was definitely one of my hardest hitters that I had throughout the league. You know, I did pick up the team and I didn't do the best, but every week, Magnazone was definitely there. I loved how it just was able just to just come in, click one move, and something to damage. And I think in yeah. regards to everything on his team, Magnazone fits the bill really well here. Yeah, I, I, I like this pick for Beard, 100%. Um, um, you know, he has a little bit of a fire weakness, but that can be easily fixed within his next couple of picks. Uh, but here we see, you know, Magnazone gets Magnet Pool, which we haven't seen in a while, but like... This is true. It's still pretty good uh, against like Mel Metal. Probably if you find out that thing is choice banded, so you're you're gonna be taking hits and hitting hard. It's for the Skarmory, the Corviknight. You know, Steel types are gonna be have to be careful here. This thing is gets Volt Switch, great pivotal here. The but one... as you're mentioning, really complements with the um, the grassy surge from the grassy terrain. Um, the one question though, does I think it pairs very well with Volcarona as well. It's it's really good. I, I really like this pick and I've seen well, I've seen Shay use it before. But my, you know my one big question though, shade, is sometimes because, maybe they're the same identity for all I know. Who knows? But the one big question is is even though Magnazone does have access to the Magnapole, was it able to pick up a decent fire type move now that hidden power fire is gone? Hmm. 
moving on. And to end off this round, you guys, we head into the Victor Vale Victinis picking up the Rose Raid, which I honestly think, I don't know why, but this is just such a unique team that visually looks really good together. Like, visually, just having the Mons next to each other, it looks good. It's a good looking team. But no, Rose Raid, an absolute powerhouse. I know I've used it before, and I know Arthur got sniped on this pick, which I was actually really happy to hear about because hearing Arthur want this mon scares me. <laughs> so uh, Victor Hill Victini definitely can def can use this mon. Grass, Poison type, access to spikes, toxic spikes if I'm not mistaken as well. Uh, all around powerhouse. This thing hits like a truck when it wants to. It can throw up. It can throw up some bulk, and yeah, I. I don't, I don't like to face this mod at times just because I never know what set to plan for. I think I do, but then I don't. And at the same time, it it really does pair yeah, nicely I, with everything. Yeah, I had it last season. Um, what well, base 90 speed, I think that's a phenomenal speed stat to have, especially for a grass type. Um, yeah, just, you know, access to spikes, access to the um, toxic spikes. It gets the powders. This thing is really, really good. I think it's a solid pick. I, I love this pick. I've used it before. I haven't used it to the best abilities, but it's a mod that Antony will get all its money's worth out of it. Absolutely. And he's going to go ahead and swing back around and round off his Fairy Dragon Steel Core with Drudagon. Probably one of the most underrated dragons in this meta ironically to match with his mascot probably one of the only true answers to victini back in the 3ds days uh which you probably knew too well squid <laughs> true uh yeah no dreadagon i think if i'm not mistaken yeah i, I want a championship with this thing it's it's so good it gets the abilities of of glare you get stealth rocks um dragon tail this thing is mold breaker i love my mold breakers it's rough it gets skin. um rough skin yeah rough skin like Access it's to gunk this shot, is to a really really types. good pick. i it's, mean yeah it pairs so nicely and i feel like, like it was one of those one of the only mods i could really help like wholeheartedly go against drache and togekiss collectively and now that now it's on his team not the fastest mon absolutely but I want to say Jetagon even got access to Dragon Dance this this uh, generation. I might be mistaken on that, but I want to say that's a thing now. Can we can we confirm or deny that Jetagon gets Dragon Dra Dragon Dance now? I really enjoy that um, Fairy Steel Dragon Core here, though. Oh yeah, no, With those it's... three picks. I think that's super super good. I was wrong. A little bit of a I think with three monster, it's a little bit of an ice weakness. Uh, but two things I don't think there's that many ice types plus Jirachi can eat up any hit from any ice type so it's like unless you get that and he, he doesn't have a water type yet so I'm not even worried exactly. about it exactly no I think it's a great round off to a bulky uh, hard hitting fairy dragon steel core and paired with Roserade just to start whittle stuff down this core is going to be able just to come in and just do some damage afterwards for sure but jumping back to beer now he's going to go ahead and pick up one of the more speedier dragons and one of the lesser known or picked up dragons in Noivern, but I really, really enjoy this pair, uh, uh, this dragon type. Just more recently from seeing it in some metagames, I know I've seen uh, Pokey Aim put in the finest of work with Noivern, dropping Dracos left and right, and I feel that with this speed tier, this is once again one of those speeds uh, that, you know, it's very hard to match in with Boom Burst. Draco Meteor, Fire Blast, you know, on this thing, you know, this thing is, it's going to be putting in the hurt, put of choice specs on this thing, you know, it two shots basically everything, if you ask me. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Um, what's, I feel like his speed is like 121 or something like that. I know it's past like 120. It has to be. Um, but yeah, the speed, I, I think, a Frisk Bond, this is a fast Frisk Bond, which makes it so good. Like, ridiculously good. It, it's pivotal as well. Um, I, f I feel like it should get defog. I could be wrong. It does get defog. I feel like every flying type gets defog. Um, but Frisk, I think Frisk in draft league format is phenomenal. Phenomenal because, you know, you try to keep your opponent guessing what item you have. And here, 
Norvin's just gonna come in, and I, I've been watching. I've been watching Poke Aim use it right now. Same. Like Poke Aim and Envy are both undefeated, and like these are mons that are on their teams, and I'm just like they're utilizing it to the best advantage, 100. So I feel like, you know, just watching these other players and how they use it, and then just kind of bringing that to play style a bit to your team is gonna be very very scary because I. I'm scared just to face Envy himself, so like, or Poke Aim. So, if Beard just deals that strategy and uses it against me, I, I'm, I'm going to be in trouble. Exactly. Uh, so, I'm going to go ahead and round off my Fairy Dragon Silcore and pick up Bronze Song. This is a mon I know you've used time and time again, Squid, and I feel like I definitely needed to pick up this mon uh, to pair up with Clefable just to definitely build a more defensive core around High Dragon once again. Uh, Access to two great abilities with Levitate and Heatproof. Uh, having that psychic typing as well allows me to do so much. I do get access to screens, which I absolutely love. I feel like having High Dragon behind one screen is going to be amazing, including Jolteon as well. And being able to swap back and forth between Clefable and Bronzong is just going to do wonders for my team. I feel like it's a really good solid core to start with and i'm excited to be able to use it and i have honestly in my opinion a really good uh trick room counter as well uh i love bronze on it's another mon that um i'm watching envy use like i'm, I'm just i'm gonna reference all these guys because these are these are powerful mons that like seriously you can get so much out of them as you were mentioning the, the screens so good um it's, I think this is a solid, solid trick room user, 100%. So I don't know what you're gonna pair with so far, but you know, and you're completing your- um, Fairy Dragon Steel. Or steel, yeah, exactly that. Um, and like when you can play all three of them, you know, they, they each cover each other's weaknesses super, super nicely. So I think you did a great job here, Thumb Brother 2. Um, you got yourself another rock setter, which yes, is I awesome. Do. Yes, um, I do. This is a what body press, body press so. user, and all that, all that fun shenanigans that I am interested in learning about. But up next, we have speaking of rock rushers, <laughs> we have Conkelder joining the absolute thrashing that is the New Haven Charizards. Conkelder is scary, Conkelder behind screens even scarier dude oh my goodness i've tried to use conkelder in the past i think i had it season five and i just could not utilize it to the, my best advantage i just think it's just out of my play style but every time i've had to go up against a conk i've gotten wrecked by it every single time well just near every single time and i feel like it fits this type of setup slash overbearing mon uh situation that uh Zeminen is uh, setting up properly. I mean having Guts on this thing. It's, it's just so scary. And then you have screens behind it, dude. Oh my gosh This is these are some scary teams that we, we're seeing right now Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna tell you off the record how to break through this team But I, um, no, you. yeah, Conk, I've used it, it before um, as you were mentioning behind the screens This thing is gonna be a monster and a half it's already a monster by itself, actually. But now, like, adding the screens, it's just... It's so good. This is one of the few mines that I believe... You don't even need any speed investments. Um, it gets the Iron Fist Drain Punch. I, I, all three of its abilities are amazing, by the way. Absolutely. Sheer Force, Guts, and Iron Fist. Like, how can like you, what? How can you go wrong with any Exactly. Ability? You can't go wrong with any move, any set, any it's just it's really really good um i've seen um i know i faced somebody before with it too i i know i know this thing especially in like trick room is amazing you know i think in trick room this thing is amazing behind the veils i'm done i'm <laughs> done with this team people better be bringing some brick breaks around that's all i'm saying up next <laughs> though a very shocking surprised to see uh birmingham jolts pick up celebi a base 100 mon uh celebi the onion fairy that i definitely have not seen 
played too often, even in, you know, standard 3DS uh, draft league days. But, like I said, base 100 across the board, grass and uh, psychic type does have that bug weakness. Does help out in regards to uh, rounding off that uh, grass, water, fire core. But one of the most interesting ones that I've seen in quite some time, Squid. How do you feel about this pick? Uh, solid B. Mm. Um, I know it gets rocks, right? It Are does. Pretty sure you're listening gets rocks. Pretty sure. So that's, um, I think that's his first rock setter, which is, it's nice. Um, it gets access to U-turn, so that's one thing I do like, um, what I enjoy both about Jirachi and Celebi here is the fact they both get Healing Wish. So you can mm. fully recover like that Urushifu right there, Rapid, can get back to full HP. So that's going to be very, very scary. Um, this now becomes his fastest bond. So I, I feel like DJ still needs a little bit more speed because he has nothing that breaks Celebi 100. The game, uh, but Celebi, it's a good pick. It's a good pick. It's a solid pick. It gets it gets Calm Mind, if I'm not mistaken. So that's going to be nice. And I, I think you really can't go wrong with it. Speaking of Mon, you can't go wrong with. Uh, Matt's going to go ahead and get a little bit more speed there. This man's getting the speediest team I've ever seen. And he's picking up Weavile. Oh, my God. <laughs> Matt. He's, he is going for the kill, man. Weavile, I've definitely used... It very efficiently. Revile, an absolute powerhouse. I love using Revile. Uh, fake Out, Swords Dance, Life Orb Sets, uh, Knock Off, Icicle Crash, Ice Shard. I mean, this mod, Ice and Dark type, is both are such very, very offensive types to use. Um, does get access to Throat Chop for those Fairy types, if you do want to use it. Uh, which is amazing for that Sylveon. But, no, once again, another uh, Pokemon that can definitely ruin your day and with its speed alongside Keldeo and Zeraora I mean this is going to be a very very tough team to try and break through regardless of if they're more so glass cannons ex excluding that Corviknight I mean Matt has potential here Matt definitely has a lot of potential just to start with Weavile hurt a couple things then send Zeraora or Keldeo out and just ruin your day yeah, agreed, agreed. You can't go wrong with Sneasel here, especially now that they gave it Triple Axel. If you guys are following my page, you guys know how much I hate Triple Axel. Um, but yeah, it's a great move that increases its... Every time he lands it, I think the first one hits for 20 base, the second one hits for 40 base, and then the third one hits for like 60 base. So that's like together in itself, 120 base move. So really, really good. Pairing it with the Life Orb, as you were mentioning, this thing gets Swords Dance. It's a fake out user. It's a knockoff user. It's the speed on his team is off the chart. And I believe that speed is something that is crucial in the draft league format 100%. And Matt definitely has three mons, I believe, right now that are over base 100. It will be interesting yes. to see how he does round off the rest of it because sometimes if you have a team that is too speedy, I mean, things like Trick Room definitely hinder it as well as just having some of those even though the 20 minute timer does exist and you know land does exist as well which you can have some more longevity in regards to your timer i mean having some more bulky mods and not having to worry about speed sometimes is more beneficial because you can invest that in hp and attack or special attack at the same time so definitely interesting to see how matt rounds off the rest of his team here for sure But speaking of another bulky bird, <laughs> we're going to go see Mandibuzz team up with uh, Aegislash, Terrakion, and Seismitoad for the Albany Abomasnows. Mandibuzz is definitely one of those mons where you don't see drafted too often, but when it is, it can be very gimmicky or it can just be a pain in the butt. Or a little bit of both. Um, I think it honestly pairs really, really well uh, with everything. It does help with the extra ground weakness with the immunity. Um, and having that dark and flying typing, I think, is just all around really, really interesting. It, it's instantly covered by Seismitoad's ground type. 
Uh, the dark type helps with each slash, each slash as well. Uh, what do you think about this pick, Squid? You there, bro? No, I, I really, I think Mandibuzz here is fantastic. I really do think um, it's pairing his team nicely together. Uh, we saw, oh, you know, he had no ground immunities. Mandibuzz does that for him. It's super bulky. It's ridiculously bulky. I don't know why. You know, it's so funny because I always thought Braviary would be the better of the two, and somehow Mandibuzz came up on top. This ugly um, SOB is. So, yo, know, I, yeah, but as you were mentioning, this thing is gimmicky. Um, the fact it gets Roost, the fact it gets Toxic. Defogger. Just, it's this amazing defogger. Now that it gets access to boot, um, Boots as well, it's kind of like, uh, it's another mod that you can't really chip down that easily. But looking at his team overall, it complements. It goes very well with Seismic Toad. It goes like, well, Mandibuzz is kind of weak too. Like the Rock and the Fairy type moves, Seismic Toad covers that pretty well, except for the Fairy type, but the Rock, it resists. So I really like this pick. I really like this pick. Plus Electric. Can't forget Electric. Seismic Toad is immune to that. So the synergy is coming off this team a lot better than I thought it would come off, but I'm enjoying it. Absolutely, and let's not forget that its ability to overcoat uh, with the overcoat allows it to work very effectively in hail and sandstorm opposing teams just because it doesn't take any damage from them. So it'll be interesting to see how that works because, uh, like, seriously, it could probably be a decent answer to your Excadrill if you're not careful. <laughs> but moving on, speaking of the big boy ground types, oh my god, and it, ke it keeps getting worse, Squid. Max goes ahead and picks up the Kurukugadal, a mon that we both have used in the past, correct? Like, you've used one too? Yeah, I feel like this is more of a Jetman 99 kind of mon, but Crook, oh man, Crook, oh Crook, oh Crook. <laughs> I love this mon. I love this mon so much. Um, Moxie is one of, I put, it's such an amazing, amazing ability um late game moxie is crazy intimidate is so good he's just giving himself a rocker awesome 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 um amazing knockoff user um earthquake for stab dude this mon is such a strong mon and base what 91 speed if i'm not mistaken Somewhere i feel like it's in the there. 90s i know it's in the 90s but as a choice scarfer, I've loved running this mod, especially late game. Late game, you do not leave Crook on the field. If you want my two cents, guys, you never leave it on the field. And now following up, we have the Neo Show Necrozmas picking up Haxorus. All around amazing Pokemon. Uh, I think it's honestly between him and Hydreigon, I actually prefer Haxorus over Hydreigon. Surprisingly, even though it's on my team, you know, shocking. But no, Haxorus is just super, super cool. Another Mold Breaker mon uh, that d has excellent coverage for Fairy types, and I think it actually gets Iron Head and Poison Jab. Uh, has access to Swords Dance and Dragon Dance both. So if you want, so it's very scary to you know figure out which one it's going for. And all it has to do is really come in and uh, you know click Outrage, and things are dying. I think this one's like base 97 speed or like 93 speed. I know it's in the 90s somewhere, kind of like Crocodile. I want to say it's slower than Hydreigon. But uh, paired with Ferrothorn, it's really, really nicely done. I, in my opinion, uh, just those those Gen 5 mons really do pair nicely together. And I think this is the beginning of a beautiful Fairy Dragon Steel Core. Uh, yeah, Haxorus, Greymon, Molebreaker, so, so good. Um... Swords Dance, Dragon Dance, you name the dance, it's got it. Um, He's busting a move. This uh, I love this moves. pick, though. I, I really do enjoy it. I don't think I've used Haxers myself, but, man, um, especially on his team here, like, the bulk, you know, I feel like opponents are going to be so prep, prepping much for the bulk that Haxers is going to come in, and it's just going to make walls in his or dense on his opponents absolutely but your next pick can just go through the walls can it not squid uh gengar such another high point you have 216 point 
a three 16 point mons and then a 15 point uh, mon following up. You are drafting some overpowered powerhouses, my dude, but brilliantly done. I love the synergy that you are continuing to build in regards to your team, especially in re uh, with the Necrozma. I feel Gengar and Necrozma really do pair exceptionally well. I feel like the only, uh, I think the only, uh, what's it called, uh, thing you really needed outside of your mods, outside of a Rapid Spinner, was someone to absorb Toxic Spikes, and Gengar, of course, it definitely does that, unfortunately losing its Levitate ability, but still super, super fast mod at base 110, if I'm not mistaken. Huge outlandish move pool, being able to hit everything and anything under the sun. And, yeah, you have a very, very scary team here. Uh, the synergy is very is slowly starting to come together because right now it's like you have all these powerhouses and now I feel like what you're going to, like, I, well, I know what you're going to do but because I've seen your draft, but, um, like, right now it's like you have all these powerhouses and now you're just going to be able to choose all these other mods to start rounding off your picks and being like, well, I can choose these two one week, I can choose these two another week, and no one's really going to know what to really prep for. And I love that. Yeah, agreed, agreed. I just wanted to fast, um, ghost type. I wanted a powerful grass. Uh, I, oh, I wanted a powerful ghost type because, you know, what ghost is few weaknesses or just one immunity with normal types. And normal types technically don't go in draft league it's one of the, i think the least commonly draft typings um plus but i think poison and and just ghost typing is so so good and gengar is a really really good mod it really is i mean oh you since gen one and yeah very very powerful mod and i'm excited to see what you do with it this season but moving on now we have galvantula being picked up by carlos and the iowa cub shoes uh he has a he has a web, a Weber, and I believe this was a snipe for you as well, if I'm not mistaken. You were waiting for this mon. Yeah, I, I think this Weber is gonna really complement very, very well. Cause um just the Orishifu single, which was you know, looking at his team, nothing was breaking a hundred. Now he is adding a Weber to kind of slow down his opponents. Uh it's gonna help the Rotom heat a lot. He's doubling up on the electric typing already. But I think that's fine. He still has a lot of room. Um, eight points Weber. It's really good. Galvantula is nothing to laugh at. Um, and personally, I really don't see that those electric, the dual electric type is really hindering him here because, once again, the only real weakness to electric type is ground types. And you have Galvantula being a bug type, which makes it neutral. And then Rotom Heat has a whole immunity. So unless you're going up against, like, say, maybe an Excadrill, <coughs> you, um, you know, you're really hitting everything very super effectively. And no, ha being able to slow down, slow down those mods so Urshifu single strike can uh, go ahead and, you know, get those advantage on those base 100 plus mods is really going to be uh, amazingly beneficial. And at the same time, Compound Eyes, Thunder, I'm pretty sure you know all about that squid. Uh, like, what's like 91, 91.5, 92% accurate thunders? It's supposed to be like 98, 99. Oof, I hate you knowing that. I hate you knowing that. That's absolutely scary, but no, I feel like it, like having a webs for him is gonna is an excellent choice here, and being able to then have Slowbro to teleport and swap out definitely allows uh, a lot of uh, potential here for Carlos's team. But now rounding off the end of the round, into the wheel pick once again is Arthur, who's going to be picking up some speed of his own to help with uh, Dragapult and Cinderace. Now, this is Blaze Cinderace and not Libero or Librero or whatever it's called. But, Blazing Squid, we know that Blaze should not be slept on. Blaze, bro. Libero, bro. L run that Libero all day. I, is it? Yeah, I think you can run Libero in this are league. You are you sure? Because um, we have. I, th I could have sworn that it was Blaze. That was none. Oh, I think it is Blaze. I think you're right. I think the dog does say Blaze. Yeah. I, I think I was... that's why I didn't draft it. I'm pretty sure I did this reason I didn't draft it. Um, but yeah, no, Blaze. Blaze is still good. Pyro isn't Pyro Ball like? What is it like one? Yeah. Thirty. I feel like it's really high up there. Something like that. Access to Zen Head, but as well, I believe it even gets Flame Charge as well. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it gets Flame Charge to help with. Uh, spinning it up and getting an attack off. My bad. 
but yeah, it's yeah. really amazing pick here. A very offensive fire type that I do feel Ar Arthur is going to be able to utilize really really well it helps out with his scissor uh, having that times four weakness of course but being just a pure fire type is few and far between as far as fire types but with when the majority of the fire types are like this but and can hit as hard as cinderace does this is definitely a pick that arthur is used to it almost reminds me of him drafting um oh what is it called uh fennekin's final evolution um Oh, what's it called? Breaks in and then... Uh... Oh, I cannot remember it. Because th this is how wonderful Fennekin is as a starter. Uh, Delphox. This, I feel like this is him drafting a fast fire type in, in Delphox. But this is a better Delphox. So it's I... a much better Delphox, 100%. Um, yeah, no. Ridiculous speed. I think, yeah, pairing it with Dragon Ball is ridiculously um, too good. He already has... Um, I'm not sure if you noticed, but like you turn on Scizor, Dragapult, Cinderace, Baton Pass. Sylveon gets Baton Pass. Disney has Pivotal all around. So, like, ah, it's going to be difficult, man. It and is so, so, so let's difficult. Go ahead and pair that and up here with I thought tank. nobody would draft a normal type. Mil Tank, bro. I mean, Mil Tank is. I, I'm, I am all about that Mil Tank. I have definitely used it in a couple leagues before. I. I I love this thing so much. Mill Drink as a move is absolutely broken. Uh, just the, I feel it. I honestly think it's better than Chansey at the end of the day because it has access to some really cool abilities and Scrappy being able to hit Ghost Tights, which has which has definitely happened to me surprisingly. I prep for everything except a Scrappy Mill Tank, and sure enough, Scrappy Mill Tank. It has Sap Sipper to uh, have grass a grass immunity which i don't even know why you would want that be with his team right now because he has no grass weaknesses but it's still really cool this is a fast fat cow thick fat so fire and ice type attacks that you want to or at scissor and dragapult are useless to mill tank and for only eight points a base 100 mod that covers two of his main attackers weaknesses who let Arthur draft this thing? Um, the other 11 coaches. Except <laughs> we're terrible. We are terrible people for letting him do this, man. Yeah. I love Mil Tank though. I love, please make it, please make it blue and call it 2%. That's all I ask, Arthur. <laughs> make it blue for 2%. Sincerely, Thumb Brother too. Exactly. Uh, but no, Mil Tank, I think it's too fast for its own good. I've never seen a fast cow. Face, like, not, have you ever ch been chased by a cow squid? Cows are fast. It's so it's it's so bulky too, man. Uh, it's I, this is his what first rocker. So glad to see him putting a rocker on his team um, for eight points. I think this is fantastic. Mill drink. This thing gets thunder wave. It has a very very nice move pool. It really it's a ridiculously does. really good move pool. Not to mention um, body thing slams takes as hits. well. I mean, it's gonna paralyze you one way or another. Yeah, I know. It's everyone has nightmares from playing Pokemon. You know crystal silver gold everyone has nightmares we're gonna continue having nightmares arthur is whitney's child confirmed <laughs> it's just how the life the with the cookie crumbles man let's just move on <laughs> to whimsicott i love this pick whimsicott adding on to um carlos here in the iowa cup shoes is a solid solid pick honestly i feel like it's a solid pick in the sense because we're adding a grass type to Finalize his um, road fire water grass core. Whimsicott is ability prankster tailwind is really really good. Um, I think it's going to pair mention. very nicely with the Orishifu. So he doesn't have to always bring Galvantula, and he gets Leech Seed. Um, it gets Stun Spore. You can be a fast substitute to get Moonblast. I, this is a really good pick. Hey, I really I'm like it. It's, what you turn two. U turn as well. No, absolutely. Yeah, this is such an incredible mon and such an underrated mon at times just because that times four poison weakness does exist. However, like like the biggest thing like I wanted to point out, which you hit on Squid, was definitely the fact that now Carlos can bring either webs, tailwind, or both if he so chose, just to honestly mess with your head. And one more thing I wanted to touch on before we do move on is the fact that Whimsicott can honestly come in and sweep because I think it has like a base 112 speed. I know it's crazy up there. 
but you put a choice specs on this thing and it's kind of works like a Gengar in a sense where it can just come in and click a move at late game and sweep which is really cool but here we go this is a mon I told you to pick up for your team in Tangrowth yes you get all the credit for this one Absolutely. you get all the credit for this one look I like I know um, do you want to talk about it or do you want me to talk about it yeah you go for it tell them why you you told me to pick it up so listen i i love squid like squid and i have known each other for years i know like he's my for me he is my ultimate rival outside of arthur but that doesn't mean i don't want him to absolutely wreck house on everyone else that exists in this league and one of the core like primary um uh, answers to excadrill in most draft leagues is going to be tangled Tangrowth is just that bulky grass type that honestly Excadrill could handle. Uh, like, not so much in Sun and Moon Days because uh, Aerial Ace or, or uh, Flying type Z moves do exist with uh, Aerial Ace, but Tangrowth was the answer to Excadrill, is the answer to Excadrill. What happens if Tangrowth is alongside of Excadrill? Nothing can li is there anymore. Well, not nothing. I'm not going to say that because I have my own backup. But, no, Tangrowth is really cool. Super, uh, like, super, super defensively on uh, the physical side. I think it's, like, base 100. I think an HP attack and defense. It does it does lack on the special uh, special side of things. But, no, this thing gets knockoff. You throw in a Slip Fist on it, run four moves. This thing is a powerhouse. And, yeah, no, this thing, this thing will put on the hurt for sure. And, Squid, you will have fun with the spawn. I tell you that much right now. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, you covered it, man. You covered everything. I feel like I needed a grass type um, just to kind of pair up with Exudro and Gengar for sure, for sure. Um, I love it. I love Tangrove. I'm already having fun. I'm already prepping. I didn't bring it against Jetman, unfortunately, but I do plan on bringing it down the line. Um, but no, it's a, it's a fun mod. It's a very bulky mon and especially the fact that its ability is regenerator mm -hmm. regenerator mons are so fun to use because you could swap in and out in and out in and out and have a fully healthy mon like what exactly <laughs> oof pre-marina pre-marina my dude uh you go ahead and take this one you you love yourselves on pre-marina here and it, this fits preston's team really really well all i all i know is as soon as i, I saw him draft this mon I knew I had to draft something to counter this because Primarina wrecks through my whole team if it's holding a choice specs. Um, I do love it's there's the hidden ability, which it gets liquid voice. Super, super good. Now because there's the throat spray, which you can do liquid voice, hyper voice, and then get a special attack boost. So this thing is so good. Uh, the water typing as i was mentioning remember water types can either be bulky or can be offensive and i think they're the best at that so Primarina does that it can be bulky offensive um adding fairy typing onto it it's it's the special side of azumaro imagine azumaro is the physical wall breaker this is like its cousin because it's a special wall breaker it gets ability of flip turn now so like you don't even have to stay in it has very very good coverage with energy ball um ice moves it's it's such an amazing mod and easily breaks through almost any wall any wall and here is an electric type that i actually almost picked up instead of jolteon but uh is toxtricity toxtricity probably one of the coolest new mons from gen 8 in my opinion uh, poison and electric type, but a typing we have never seen before and done beautifully here. Um, this pair is so excellent with uh, Crocodile, in my opinion, uh, just because like it's the immediate answer to uh, what you want in the Toxtricity. And like Toxtricity does have a lot of power, like you were saying with Prima Arena, that throat spray being tagged on to Toxtricity does help it in the long run or throw a choice specs Don't on forget, it. Don't forget, this thing gets that uh, shift gear too. It does get shift gear. Oh my gosh, you are right. It just allows uh, for Max Rapture to go ahead and have a decent, a uh, really good setup mon here to pair up with everything. And, you know, this could be an early game setup. This could be a late game setup, a Volt Switcher, uh, something to get guaranteed Toxics because it's a poison type. Uh, but I feel like it fits this team pretty darn well. And if this team, like, on paper, uh, this is the stuff of nightmares. It's definitely the stuff of nightmares. Yeah, a lot of coaches are going with high point picks, and it's <laughs> it's coming together. 
really scary. It definitely really is. nicely. But up next, we're gonna go ahead and see Flygon get taken by Blaze uh, to add on to his Fairy Dragon Steel Core. Uh, I love Flygon. Flygon has come such a far way in the last uh, few generations. Finally getting access to Dragon Dance. Finally being able to be on par with uh, Garchomp now, which it lacked before, which I absolutely love now. It's a base 100 speed Mon, surprisingly. Gets access to U-Turn as well. Decent move pool as well. And I believe, I, I want to say it gets access to Defog. Did I say that? I don't think it did. Pretty sure it gets access to Defog. Uh... But no, this thing is a very underrated dragon type. For seven points, it is a definite steal, and having such and having an ability of levitate compared up with Mandibuzz once again adds to helping Aegislash and Terrakion shine. I like this pick a lot. No, yeah, Flygon, great, great, great pick. Um, I don't like that it's quad weak to ice. But that can easily be fixed, I think. Um, His first but it does pair, as you were mentioning, nicely with Edge Slash. Really, really well. I, I feel like each of their weaknesses are really covered by one another. So this is a fantastic pick, 100% here. Um, he's doubling up on ground type, but I don't think that's an issue whatsoever. Who says Still pretty ground early. Types are bad. Uh, says for a seven pick, mon a seven point mon, I think Flygon is really, really good, really solid. Um, so good eye by Blaze here to pick up Flygon when he did. Um, you know, you don't have to go so high for um, a dragon mon like this. Especially when Flygon's like base speed is at 100. So that's really good. I think base 100 mons are really good. Because I don't think Garchomp is around, unfortunately. <laughs> did, I, did, I skip a, did I skip a slide? Hold on. Oh, I did not. Alright, now we're wrapping back around to Matt. In the Winnipeg Jellison, picking up Chandelier. I'm like, this dude does not stop with the uh, power. Uh, Chandelier, uh, Fire Ghost type, helping round off uh, his own uh, Grasswater Fire Core. Chandelier is an absolute scare of a mon to have on your team. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Hex shenanigans if you really want to be that guy. I believe it does get access to Calm Mind as well. Not the bulkiest of mons, unfortunately, which is kind of the theme outside of Corviknight for his team. But once again, this is definitely a mon that you need to prep for in regards to everything else because if you allow Chandelier to get in for free behind a substitute, it's it's gonna put a dent in, in your team no matter what and uh like this is definitely matt's play style fast pace swapping and hard hitting mods that's uh, this is where matt is going yeah 100 percent matt's play style here um as you're mentioning very 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 solid pick here um compliments i would say the most right now compliments Corviknight, um, but I, I like this pick. Um, if I'm we're not mistaken, Chandelure is like 140-ish special attack, which is super super high. It gets Flash Fire, gets Infiltrator. I don't think Infiltrator is anything you should play at. Um, so like these screens that Zemanon is setting up, it's not gonna matter against this Chandelure. It's 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 a really really solid pick we know it's base 80 um speed and i don't think it's a horrible horrible speed this thing is also a trick room user so like if matt pairs it up with something nicely down the line it can be a in a world of hurt but i really do enjoy this pick i've used chandelure before in the past and it's it's a really good mod absolutely and we see another dragon going, if my screen wants to load here. We have Duraladon now finally pairing up with the Birmingham Jolts here. Uh, Duraladon pairing up with Celeb This I'm still trying to figure out where DJ is going with this team. And like, I still don't understand it. And I have to face him in like two days because of this. <laughs> uh, but no, Duraladon, an amazing still in dragon type. Very, very hard. Uh, he basically has two of his fairy dragons still uh court and one mon which is incredible i think it's a really good one to grab uh super defensive and super hard hitting at the same time at, like, i just yeah i oh. i had duraludon last season it's a really really good mon um 
but it's, it's, I, I really like the typing of Dragon Steel type. Don't like that his special defense is like in the 50s, but it's defenses That's scary. and it's our super high special attack, super high. Base 85 speed is really good. Uh, a good amount of HP. Um, it's a good physical attack as well. It's like, it's not nothing to play with. Um, not so I really do enjoy this mod though. It, it's a it's a rocker. Um, it can be an iron defense body press set. It's it's a really good mod, and I don't think anyone should sleep on it whatsoever. Absolutely no. Uh, the biggest thing for me is that the fact that Dragon and Steel type together only has so many weaknesses, and because you think about dra Dragon's main weaknesses and Dragon and Fairy and Ice, I mean. Steeler Dragon covers that immediately. So honestly, what the heck is Duraladon weak to? Ground maybe? Ground potentially fighting? I have no idea. Like, yeah, yeah, just ground and fighting. <laughs> that's scary. That's absolutely scary because now I'm thinking about my team. <laughs> Moving on. And speaking of ground types, dude, uh, we're picking up with a uh, Rhyperior here. Uh, Rhyperior is super cool because it has a couple of really cool abilities one of them being the lightning rod ability which uh absorbs all electric type attacks and then it's other one i believe i cannot recall the name of it but i believe it's one that lowers the super effective damage that it takes so it usually takes its times four weaknesses to grass and water and allows it to hit a little bit hit it a little bit less but rhyperior is definitely such a hard hitting mon it is a wonderful rocker at the same time and for 8 points, I feel like this is an excellent mon for him to pick up here, especially uh, that bulk behind screens will add to the longevity of Rhyperior. What do you think about this pick, Squid? Rhyperior, super good mon. I think he hadn't um, got a rocker yet, so this is his first one. Uh, if we look at all his weaknesses, pairs really nicely. I don't see where it's going to hinder him. 100 percent it, it complements everyone else uh goes really really nicely with rotom wash except for the grass weakness but then that's where scola comes in um grass typings have to face a uh, little than nine tails uh i don't think rhyperia is anything to play with because um hey it's defenses are ridiculously high if this thing got shell smash i would scream because that shouldn't be legal but it's a really good mon it's a really it's a great defensive wall and once again we're, we're pairing it up with the aurora veil from the nine tails which is going to make it a much 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 more bigger threat and if he wanted to he could probably run rock polish which he would make it scary he really could uh but speaking of weird and different ground types i'm gonna go ahead and pick up quagsire uh do you want to take this one squid and tell me what you think Quagsire, Quagsire, Quagsire. You know, my answer used to be for Quagsire was Hidden Power Grass. We don't got that no more. But <laughs> Quagsire uh, being unaware. So now Thunbrother 2 has two unaware mons. It gets water absorbed. I wonder for what mon would you need water absorbed for? Listen, like, seriously? I honestly That's don't an, know. Like... It's an interesting thought, 100%. Um, I don't think I've ever seen Quagsire get um, rocks, though. Does it? I don't believe so. However, I, don't believe so. Um, I definitely took a I took a big page. I'm not going to lie. I definitely took a big page out of Arthur's book here and drafting Clefable next to Quagsire. I believe the, the, the pairing between the two is phenomenal. Being able to wish pass, wish pass back onto Quagsire, keeping it as healthy as possible. Um, I, the Quagsire shenanigans of Toxic Protect... It like hinders me to this day because of Arthur. I but I, all in all, I think it's just honestly a very, very good uh, water ground type. Once again, in regards to like I said earlier with Seismitoad, it's not the most offensive, but that doesn't mean that the Scald Burns will come off as well, or there's the Scalds, the Earthquakes, you know, whatever it may be coming from Quagsire won't hurt. And for seven points, I feel like it definitely added the right type of. Uh, blend to my team for a very very low amount of points and I'm, I'm not 
I'm not gonna lie, even though I have some more bulkier mons, and this is kind of a theme I'm going with as well, I have bulkier mons, yes, and I will have some more bulkier mons coming up, absolutely, but I definitely want to use these mons in a new, unique way to kind of change my playstyle and change the way I think about more so bulky mons and add some more offensiveness to them, so you never know, you might see a max speed quagsire come out of the woodworks. I'm, I'm just saying. That's that's yeah. <laughs> I love the fact though here you actually well, I feel like you took a very very dangerous route because you're lose you're using so many of your low tier points right now. Yes. While the rest of the players are going high tier, you know, the Salt Lake City Swampers are taking what they can in the low tier before anyone else comes down there. So really risky move here. I saw I saw the potential. What can I say? I saw the potential. But speaking of mons that I've definitely wanted to use before that's very, very high tier is Starmie. I wanted to originally pair this thing with uh, oh, with Starmie, Mega Charizard X. Starmie, I've legit, I have a love-hate relationship with Starmie as long as I can remember, man. Uh, absolutely incredible speed out, incredible moveset. I love this thing's moveset so much. Uh, the ability to access uh, the fa one of the fastest, uh, if not the fastest rapid spinner that we do have in the current meta. Access to recover as well. An absolutely excellent uh, roundabout or rounding to Beard's water, grass, fire core for sure because it keeps those rocks off the team. It pairs so nicely with Rillaboom and uh, Volcarona, in my opinion. And you know, this thing just hits like an absolute truck, and I mean, it hits like a truck. And this is just a starfish. Yeah, uh, Star Me's nothing to play with. Um... The 115 speed, I think, is phenomenal. The rapid spinner, it gets flip turn now. Oh my um, gosh. These really water good. types getting flip turn, man. It's just. Everyone get, you get a, a new U turn. It's the new U turn. It is. You get a flip turn, you get a flip turn. And I, one thing that I think a lot of players underestimate about Starmie is the fact that one of its abilities is analytic. Ooh, yeah, you're right. I'm pretty sure Magnazone and Starmie both here run analytic. They so do. basically, you know, with Fish's Ren is if you go first, your attack doubles. With analytic, it's like if you go if you go after, after your opponent. So like if your opponent swaps out, you're going you're already getting the analytic boost. Which I've taken before and it hurts and you're thinking it's choice specs and it's not. Oh. Oh, it's just, so much it's ridiculous. It, I think Starmie is a fantastic pick. I love it on this team, as you were mentioning, is uh, for the the Grass Fire Water Core. It fits really, really nicely. I think all we're missing is to see a Fairy type on this team, and this team, the synergy off this team is looking super, super good. Now, a different pick coming from. Uh... Coach Spartan 279 on the Victor Velvectinis to start off his uh, wheel picks. He's going to go ahead and pick up the fighting type of Surfetched. What do you think about this this pick here? I mean, Surfetched, new Armand, I haven't seen it used too much in play, so I'm not 100% sure and up to date with what it can and can't do. But I know it's just as fast as Farfetched, and that's all I know. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Surfetched, uh, it's better as a D Max Mon, per se, 100%. But you can't sleep on this thing whatsoever. Um, it does get Scrappy. I think Scrappy is one of the one of the best abilities out there, allowing you to hit ghost types. Um, so this thing can close combat anything, and it's gonna hurt. Uh, it gets access to Brave Bird, even though it's not like a stab, but still, it, Brave Bird hurts. Um, this thing gets Swords Dance. It, it's if I'm not mistaken, I think it's like in the 80s speed tier. So um, just complements it with the um, Thunder Waving Jirachi, the Thunder Waving Togekiss, the Stun Spore Roserade, and the Glare Tredagon. It's just like you're good. It's good. Um, but this mod, I, I love it. It's a, it's a really hard hitting mod. And as I was mentioning, that Swords Dance set is scary. I don't know too much about it either. But I know that pairing it with the right mons, as Antony is doing so far, Spartan 275 here, is he's he's heading the right direction. I was able to take a quick look at some things. Uh, it gets access to first impression. Uh, its speed is 65, so it is a little bit slower. Yes, it does give him a defog user, which is really, really nice. Uh, but on top of that, if he's... It, gives him 
there's also grassy glide on this thing, which is really, really interesting to see. So I'm wondering if that might be able to be useful somewhere along the line somehow. But uh, very, very cool. Oh, and it gets throat chop as well. So you gotta. I mean, we're gonna mention throat chop a lot. We love ourselves some throat chop. But with the roundabout pick, Squid, you were talking about normal types, and now here we have a very unconventional normal type and the licka licky. Now. I used to like laugh and like be like, oh, it's like a licky. I mean, it's like a licky. What's it? What's it gonna do? But no, lick a licky is pretty scary. I, I don't know if you've had some scary uh, interactions with it, but I definitely have. Uh, it has access to wish protect. It can toxic stall you. It's a heal bell user of all things, which is really really cool. And its defenses are base 95. And it's just all around a really really nicely uh, bulky mon, and it. It even gets access to Oblivious, so it's almost like a normal type. It's almost like Clefable and Quagsire had an Oblivious baby, normal type baby, and named it Licky Licky. Uh, Licky Licky, <sighs> man, does he does he need another Wish user? He, I mean, like seriously, he really could. I mean, I, I really feel like it, like he he's lacking in it. And, I mean, even if you wanted to, like, really mess with people, there is a belly drum set that Licky Licky that, uh, can be known for as well. And I think it actually gets access to elemental punches as well, just for just some fun shenanigans. No, but yeah, Licky Licky, uh, great mod. I think it's really bulky. I, I've, I've seen super bulky. Licky Licky used a few times before. Um, Space 110 HP. I don't know, it's like... Space 110? Wow. Yeah, Space 110 HP, 95 defense, and special defense. This thing can tank some hits. That is that is a wall. That is a wall indeed. Especially, oh my god, that wish is going to give so much HP. So yeah, it allows him to like just alternate between the mods. I, it gives him a lot of flexibility. I really like it because it, it gives him a lot of flexibility to work around um, what sets to bring weekly. Um, you know... Oh, there's not too much pressure now because like you know it's not strictly a 20 minute timer since we're playing on land um so it just gives him the space that he needs to work with these teams absolutely next up we have pangoro down in eight points surprising to see another uh dark fighting type pangoro very very scary to be paired up here i feel it fits the team really really well it gives him access to i believe the bullet punch user as well which is really nice to see to help against some of those uh scarier fairy types that Pangoro doesn't like, but Pangoro, Pangoro can hit pretty hard if you ask me. Uh, what do you think about this big squid? It's definitely t a couple types that he doesn't have yet on his team, so I feel like it fits pretty well. Um, I, wow, oh, I'm singing. I was about to start speaking Spanish. Um, I so Pangoro, I think he gets party shot, it so does. that's such a good move, such a good move to have on your team. Especially with this guy's team, we know he has Volcarona, so he just wants a parting shot to then get off that Quiver Dance. <laughs> Not today, Sane. But um, I think it's good. It's good. We know that knockoff is it's important to have in this league format, so that's going to be super awesome. And then, I don't know, the, the typing between dark and fighting is not my favorite, but then I can't be talking because uh, my pick deck's coming up soon. But I do, um, I think it's good. Pangoro is a good mon. I don't know how fast it is. I think it gets overlooked sometimes, but the ability that it does get parting shot, it makes it a huge asset, especially here for the Lakewood Trevenants. Absolutely. Now moving on, we are going to jump into pick 63. I think we're almost halfway there, Squid. Uh, with Tangela, with my pick, I went ahead and picked up uh, Tangela's little brother. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did have a backup plan. Believe me, I had a backup plan. No, I've I've had a love for Tangela ever. Like I used Tangrowth in the past. I've had my fun with Tangrowth, but then I found Tangela, and I found out Tangela can do basically everything and anything that Tangrowth can do, without the limitation of having to have an assault vest. I can have access to Leech Seed and Toxic, which I think is really cool. Sleep Powder as well. I mean, you can as well, but you leave yourself open to a special defense uh, weakness. So I'm very, very happy to uh, have this mod. It is the beginning to round off my uh, Water, Grass, Fire Core, which I really, really like. And so, uh, yeah, I feel I, it's a mod I'm very, very comfortable with. Uh, yes, I do have now that weakness to... Uh, 
my Eviolite knockoff situation, but I mean, I've seen <laughs> I've seen Tangela eat a plus two Ice Fang from a, a Mega <laughs> from a Mega Gyarados that I forgot to put Eviolite on, and this thing still took hits. So I, I'm very happy with this pick. It's something I'm comfortable with, and I'm happy to use it. Because it's also an answer to your Excadrill. What's up, bro? What? What? What you gonna do next pick? Uh Oh, bummer. We'll, we'll see when we get there. It's yeah. not like I've seen um, Isaac face this Tangela before, so don't worry. <laughs> Up next, we have the Alolan Marowak pickup by uh, Zeminin and the New Haven Charizards. Uh, rapid blocker, but also, I believe, a rapid spinner at the same time, Squid. Am I right here? It, it should be a rocker. Yeah, I know it's... I, can't, I think you're right. Yes, you're right. I can't remember, but another uh, another uh, immunity to uh, electric types with lightning rod again. Uh, two lightning rod users back to back, which is really interesting. But all around a very very powerful fire type does lack in the speed, and as long as it doesn't have its thick club knocked off, this mon is definitely a wall breaker. Uh, if once again a couple wall of his wall breakers are a lot slower, Conkelder, Rhyperior, Lola Marowak, but if he's able to work around that maybe get in a trick room user somewhere along the line i mean these mons can definitely shine he has the speed there with the scolipede but once again he needs to figure out a way to allow his mons outside of the veil i feel to help them shine a little bit more uh what are your thoughts on this um yeah um just kind of looking over his team i feel like he's going for more mons right now that complement from the the Aurora Veil, these like like you know Conkeldur, Rhyperior, Alola, Marowak, aren't the fastest mons, but they're hard hitting mons. You know they're all physical attackers that can really break any kind of wall. So I I feel like he is going for those hard hitters that really complement from from the Veil, and these are mons that truly truly benefit from that. Um, cause at first I could not see it with the, the alone and night tails. I, I would be like, okay, what is he trying to do? But it's there still doesn't have a check to my, uh, <laughs> cough my, um, mold breaker mod, but <laughs> he does, he has conquer, but no, it, I like it. I like it because it's complimenting from the, from the aura veil, but I feel like he does, he's lacking speed. He does have the skull beat and he has thing, but I feel like he could use a little bit faster mods. Well, speaking of something that could definitely benefit speed and a snipe oh, to you. Snipe. My this, fairy snipe. This was definitely a big snipe for you, unfortunately. But DJ went ahead and picked up the right Bombi. An excellent mod, in my opinion. Bug fairy type does get access to both. Uh, I think it gets access to defog and it has access to webs now as well. Uh, as well as uh, setup in, uh, oh, what's it called? The bug Quiver dance. Quiver dance. So very, very good Mon. Definitely allows Urshifu and Incineroar to shine, uh, giving it that speed boost that they need. But Rabombi is a threat in of its own, I, which I really, really like. I know you've tried to set up on me with this thing in the past, and I, I, I've been scared. I definitely have been scared. And Pollen Puff is in a, an attack that you don't want to take from this thing. But uh, Squid, how did it feel to be sniped? I've drafted Rabombi. Rabombi is it's so good. I've actually, I think I swept, late game swept DJ with this mom before. So he's probably just taking a page out of the squid book. Without a doubt. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, no, uh, Sticky Web's fantastic. Um, I do enjoy its ability. Its ability, um, you just basically don't get affected by secondary effects. So like, Scald won't burn you because of its ability. I forgot what it's called. Like Sweet Bill or something like that. Probably something along those lines. Um, but yeah, the fact, um, also love, this is another, um, bug types are now also a, um, a throat spray kind of user. So like he, if he wanted to, he can throw spray bug buzz and get that plus one without having to quiver dance because this thing is already fast at 124. Yep. If I'm not mistaken, You're 124, um, sir. base 90 and special attack, not the worst. It's not the worst, but it's, it's good. So I really like this pick. Um, it would have been I love Tinkerbell team, here. She's a great mod. Would have been better on your team, but you know, life. <laughs> uh, and here we have Indeedee joining Matt's team. 
Finally, uh, going away from the offensiveness and getting some more defensive mods. A normal psychic type. I forgot this thing was normal type, but really, really nicely done. Oh, though. wow. I, I really forgot too. Uh, definitely a, a mod interesting to pair up with Weavile, though, because indeed he does have access to the psychic terrain, which does uh, prevent uh, priority moves. So he'll definitely have to be careful if he wishes to pair up Weavile and, and Indeedee, but all around a very, very bulky pick. This does give him uh, anti-trick room user if he wants. I believe Indeedee can set up trick room or undo the trick room if he so wishes. Uh, but at the same time, I feel this is... I'm not 100% sure what else Indeedee does except set up trick room and uh, have psychic terrain, but interesting pick all around for Matt. Um, yeah, as you were mentioning, it just goes very nicely with Weavile. Also goes nicely with Chandelure, because, you know, Chandelure being a ghost type, it's like, oh, weak to ghost type moves. Indeed, it comes in, and we completely forgot it's a normal type, which somebody's going to forget it's a normal type, and it's just not going to be affected. So I feel like Weavile, Chandelure, and Indeed, Indeed is a super, super, I'm, I'm telling you, that's another three mods that the synergy is coming off off the chart. So imagine just Keldeo, Zero Aura, and Corviknight had amazing synergy. Now he's adding Weavile, Chandelure, and then Dini. So far, the synergy off this team is ridiculous. He's just like enter Super Saiyan 4 in the world. No, but yeah, love this pick. Uh, still kind of weak to knockoffs, but. This team takes it very well, easily, no problem. Now we got Brodo Mo here. Um, still, I think this is what his third ice weakness in a row. So that's why I'm a little skeptical. It's a little skeptical. Brodo Mo itself is—it's a great mod. Um, I think, it, like as you guys can see, it's the third Rotom to actually go, as it usually always does. Um, Leaf Storm hits hard. Uh, it's still Vault Switcher. Rotom doing what Rotom does. It's getting its Defog, getting a Will O Wisps, getting its T Waves. It's a good mod. I, I, it's a good mod. And then when we look at he still doesn't have a Fire type, but com just pairing it off with the Seismic Toad, they have very few weaknesses. It complements his Grass weakness from Seismic Toad, um, and then just Ice. I'm pretty sure he's gonna work on that ice rather than just have Ezra Slash with the fire type. What are your thoughts, Dumb Brother 2? And Thumb Brother 2 is gone. <laughs> so I will keep rambling on about Rotom Mo until he comes back. Um man, I just feel like you can't oh there he is. And the mouse is just moving and moving and moving and it's moving. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what the heck happened there. Um, my computer decided just to say you need to split up your microphones and not use the same microphone for both things. So uh, we're back, right, Squid? <laughs> Yes, sir. We are back. Yeah, thank you so much for taking care of the Espeon uh, pick. I, I really like it. Uh, you pretty much summed everything up I had to say about it. And if not, well, we are moving on. <laughs> uh, but we're going to go ahead and jump into the Heliolisk with uh, Preston and the Neo Show Necrozma. And what an amazing pick here. Uh, an electric normal type. The, those normal type pairings are so interesting to put in, but a very, very fast electric type, volt switching, hyper voice using Mon, which I really, really like, especially with that throat spray. We keep talking about throat spray Primarina, throat spray this, throat spray Heliolisk, bro. Th throat spray Heliolisk, not to mention that it can be used in any three types, I mean, in all three types of uh, main weather, and just honestly put in some decent work i like this pick a lot i feel like it fits his team very well finally gives him a mon over that base 100 speed as well it does it gives us a, uh, so he finally passes he breaks the 100 so it's super nice unless you know venusaur chlorophyll happens who knows uh but he's going to yeah it's it's an interesting typing being a normal electrotype 
Um, I love electric types. Electric types are so they're fun to use. Those, you know, Zero Aura is a fun mod. Jolteon is a fun mod. Heliolisk is a fun mod. I've drafted it before in the sun. Actually, now you think about it, Venusaur and Heliolisk solar power. That's it's, it's, that could be some fire stuff. There's definitely some potential there. There is. So yeah, um, it's a great pick. It gets what U-turn and it gets Vault Switch. It gets um. Grass Knot, Dark Pulse, Surf. It's actually, it's got an interesting move pull. It, I can say that much for sure. It absolutely does. But speaking of interesting move pull, you're going to go ahead and draft and pick up the Slurp Puff for your fairy, fairy type. Now, I know you did get sniped on getting webs with uh, your with your bug, but you were able to still get webs with Slurp Puff. And in my opinion, probably the better fairy type. Yeah, it, yeah, it was a 50-50. Um, I'm comfortable with with Ribombi. I'm comfortable with Ribombi for sure, for sure. Um, but Slurp Off is not a bad pick. Um, after talking to my front office, you know, talking about how it has access to Flamethrower, you know, you get access to Dazzling Gleam. Uh, it could be a Belly Drum set. It gets Webs. Uh, it has Endeavor. Ember. It gets Wish. It gets Wish, which Rabombi didn't get, and I can recover my team nicely. So, like, overall, it really does... It worked out for me in the long run. It really did work out for me in the long run. Uh, so, I'm not mad. I'm, I was sad I, I got sniped, but at the same time, it's it wasn't a lose-lose situation. At the end of the day, it was a win-win for me. With Slayer Puff here. Um, it definitely wasn't. Uh, the thing I really like about it, though, is definitely that uh, Citrus Berry Belly Drum... Uh, unburdened set that exists there like you don't have to bring ribs on this thing this thing can be a setup sweeper if you really wanted to and like having access to drain punch and facade as well i mean if you want to try and toxic this thing it's gonna hit harder and if you want to if you're if this thing is almost dead well drain punch is gonna give itself back this is this is like dude you really do have a very scary team i'm not gonna lie i didn't realize the magnitude that your team was was reaching this is very very scary yeah, as you know how I like to roll. I like to roll <laughs> under the radar. Yeah, with all the top picks. Uh, here comes Gudra. I like I like myself some Gudra. Uh, Carlos is picking up Gudra to round off his. Uh, I mean, to start to build more on his Fairy Dragon Steel Core. I really like Gudra. I've used it through a couple leagues before. I think it's just an all-around amazing mon. There's nothing you can't do with it. Access to Gooey to slow down mons if it hits it. Sapsipper as well. Uh, I I just all around think that Gudra is such a solid pick as a dragon type because it is just dragon type, so it only has just those very few weaknesses. But throwing a salt vest on this thing and it will eat up the hits and just just hit you right back. Yeah, no, that that special offensive on this mod is ridiculously high. It's amazing. I think I was just batting one on the other day. And it forced me to bring a physically offensive Charizard because I knew that this thing uh, is ridiculous. As you were mentioning, Gooey, I love the ability Gooey to drop your opponent's speed. I think it's really, really good. It's going to be useful. Um, you know, he's complimenting it with Whimsicott, Whimsicott, and Gudra. It's still a little bit of an ice weakness, but it's not one I'm super worried about because he's got Rotom Heat, which complements it. He has Slow Bro, complements it. Um, I think Whimsicott and Gudra are two solid picks that can go really well together. Absolutely, I definitely agree there. But up next, we have a very interesting pick here coming off of uh, Arthur and his first of the wheel picks in Mantine. Now, uh, Mantine, another very, very bulky mon, does have a time for weakness to electric types, but this mon definitely, definitely... Uh, can show its stuff this mon lives forever it does get access to roost it can live some incredible hits and i believe it can actually set up the rain as well am i wrong in that squid yeah no you're not wrong in that it does get set up the rain it gets defog if i'm not mistaken either so it's a good defogger for him um it's an interesting pick but it's not a bad pick because mill tank we know is a physically defensive mon Mantine is a specially defensive mod. I'm actually looking at this now, and like, Miltank's weakness with um, fighting type is handled very nicely by Mantine here. 
So I actually really do enjoy this pick here. Um, bro, I don't see anything wrong. You know, give it the boots now is really, really nice. I'm not sure what it does more than outside of like probably Toxic and Scald 100%, but it's it gives them very nice walls for his team and Dragapult and stuff like that. So I really, I like this pick a lot. And he's definitely going to be rounding out that wall core, uh, continuing on with Mudsdale here, Squid. Um, I think this pairs too excellently with this team. Access to that stamina boost every time it's hit by anything it gets that physical defense boost. But also rocking, I, what did Squid, uh... What did Arthur say? It has like a 150, 160 base attack stat as well. Um, yeah, that's a no-no. This thing, it gets access to rocks as well, so it's another uh, rock user he has alongside Mil Tank, which is really, really nice. And uh, definitely a fun moveset that he can uh, use just for the longevity of this team, which is... Uh, he definitely oh, it's 125 attack. 125, 125 attack. 125 attack. It's, it's still okay. ridiculous, dude. It's still ridiculous. It's, it's pretty high up there. Uh, so much for my extra Joe. Uh, oh, right. dude, right. <laughs> Moving on. Up hey, next, what's next? We got the Lycanroc Dusk. I love me some Lycanroc Dusk. And definitely a mod I was debating for a minute, but I figured it didn't really uh, go well with my team. But I, li I like seeing it here on Carlos's team. It definitely gives him you know, more of that speed that we were wanting on his team as well. A little bit lower of the speed range, which is really nice because you definitely want to start to level out different speed tiers as your uh, as your draft does go on. But like in Rock Dusk, getting the best of both worlds with the extra little bulk that the defensive uh, Midnight form has, but also having the speed and the access to a Cell Rock that the Midday form has, not to mention, uh, what is it, the Tough Claws ability which does give a bigger boost to Drill Run at the end of the day and making it hit harder than Earthquake, which is really, really nice. But once again, Squid, I'm pretty sure you'll hit on it too. A Sub Rock is just an all-around incredible uh, priority rock move that I've used plenty of times when I had this thing on my team. Yeah, um, this thing has what, Fire Fang as well. Uh, I think it's a really, really awesome mod. You know, when it comes to rock types, it's one of my more favorite ones, more favorable ones. I would take this over Terrakion any day of the week, honestly. I really do enjoy it. I know it gets access to, to Brick Break as well. So, like, it has a really, really nice move pull. But that Assault Rock, it's, it's coming so clutch. It so comes in times. very, very clutch. I mean, there are... I really like that. The, there, are, there is also the gimmick set of uh, Focus Sash Endeavor a Cell Rock. Just saying. I tried to use it on you. Not gonna lie. Did not work. I'm very mad it didn't. Moving on. <laughs> To you, you, and your fighting dark type that you don't like. Tell us about Scrafty. I know, right? Scrafty. Scrafty. But it's it's my boy, Hoodie Mellow, back on the team. Um, this team gets insane, saying you don't, bro. Saying you don't like fighting dark types, please. I know. I was I was, I was spoke too soon. I was thinking, when I was saying that, I was like, yo, Squid, you, you drafted Scrafty. And I was like, oh, shoot. I better shut up. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think, you know, I have the Gengar, I have the Excadrill, so I have that weak, um, that resistance to a fairy type move here. Um, even though we know that Intimidate is slightly nerfed, it's still very, very good. And Scrafty getting, you know, the knockoff, getting the Dragon Dance, getting the Fake Out, getting um, the Drain Punch, they, they, they just gave it close combat this gen which makes it so much better. Um, but what, it's got 115 base defenses on both sides. This is a very, very bulky boy. A very bulky boy. Not to mention that it does get access to Shed Skin as well and Moxie on top of that, just in case you want to have some more fun shenanigans. If this is more defensive Mon or a setup Mon that you want to use and I try to burn it or toxic it, I mean, let's have some Shed Skin fun. Let's see, you know, let's play, let's definitely play some RNG games this season. Why not? Exactly. But here's a mod you know very, very well, and we finally get to see that Sun team that uh, Preston has been working on come to fruition, rounding out with his fire type for his fire, water, grass, court, and Torkoal. I like this pick. This is the absolute best pick that he could have had for his team right here, Squid. What do you think? Um, yeah, you know, at first, we weren't 100% sure of what route he was going 
Um, I love Torkoal. There's a few things if Preston wanted. I'm pretty sure he already knows this, but like now we have the eject pack, which is, you know, as soon as the stats drop, like say if you want to run overheat, it's you get the overheat off and then you get to swap out and probably bring in Venusaur. You get to bring in Heal this. Um, he's going to be benefiting a lot from this sun. Um, it's like at the same time, like I guess this is where the two grass um, grass types come in because, you know, Ferrothorn doesn't like to be in the sun, but he doesn't have to bring it. He has the Venusaur who can benefit from it. So it, it's making sense now. Like his team is rounding out together and it's like, okay, I can see. Um, just adding Torkoal here boosts his synergy off the charts now. Like it's like, okay, now he has a lot of offensive threats. Absolutely, yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. I feel this is an, like the perfect choice that uh, Preston needed to start really showing the benefits of uh, the team that he's built here. And then up next we have Porygon 2. Oh my god. <laughs> first, it was, first it was everything that could break, and now we're starting to get into things that don't die. Exactly. Por Even though I do believe still Porygon 2 is cursed. It's still cursed. Porygon 2 is cursed. No, absolutely. LDL, it is cursed. And so, uh, who knows if that curse does carry on to Max Rapture this year. Uh, because I think you and I have both had our fair turns with the curse of Porygon 2. But that doesn't... Yeah, th and... <laughs> Porygon 2 is still an amazing one. No, though. no, I was just thinking of... I was thinking of, what was it? My PCL, man. I faced a Porygon 2 and I crit it. Like, it was his only wall. Like, I crit it, and after I crit it... My opponent lost 6 0. That's how cursed this mod is. And it follows, but that doesn't mean Porygon 2 isn't a bad mod. It's extremely bulky. It's the bulky duck that never dies unless it's cursed. Um, access to recover, the trace ability, our download ability is amazing. It does get access to trace as well. It's trace analytic. I think it gets analytic as well. Very, very cool mod. I really, really like it. Uh, it fits his team really well to a degree i feel like there is a bit of a heavy fighting weakness on his team it's somewhat covered with the uh toxicity and espion and azumarill but not to like the degree that i feel comfortable with saying that fighting types aren't a problem for him however this is definitely a good bulky uh mon to help keep the longevity of his team and the whittling down for his uh wall breakers to have some fun with for sure so does the curse exist for Porygon 2? I sure hope so, because this team needs a curse set on it somewhere along the line. And not the Pokemon yeah. move. Agreed, agreed. Ooh, Next up, our Manitang. Ooh. Big boy himself. This Now this is uh, Unovan Darmanitan. Galarian Dar Darmanitan is absolutely banned. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But, uh, no, Darm Darmanitan, once again, just a very, very powerful fire type. Does uh, lack in the speed department to a degree, but still, choice ban, choice scarf on this thing U-turn is very, very powerful. Flare Blitz off of this thing do a tremendous amount of work. In fact, I do recall a Jetman 99 set that blew me away. I'm not going to mention it, but I absolutely loved it. But I feel this fits his team really, really well. Finally rounds off that uh, fi Firewater Grass core that we were talk that we always continually uh, to talk about. I feel it fits this team really well as far as the kind of play style that Blaze is going for. And definitely uh, a fire type that is befitting of this team for sure. Agreed, agreed. Darmanitan is... It's a Gemman 99 mon. So, um, but it, it hits so hard. That Flare Blitz is ridiculously, it's strong. It's a nice U-Turner. Once again, it's going to benefit from Boots. Um, he has a Defogger in Rotom, Mo and the uh, Mandibuzz. So I don't see too much of an issue here for him. I, now the these, these synergy is coming off this team very, very nicely as well. I'm re really liking it. Um, his speed is still slightly lacking. But it's getting better, I think. Well, Terrakion is 108 and then Flygon at 100. But we have, like, Dragapult, like, 140. It's just, it's going to need a little more speed. Um, but I think he's going to complement it pretty soon. Absolutely. No, I definitely agree. Uh, hopefully Jetman doesn't get in contact with Blaze to give him that very special set. 
Uh, up next, though, we do have Hippowdon uh, being drafted by Matt. Uh, very interesting to see him grab this. Uh, once again, it's another bulky Mon that he is now starting to round off his team with. And a very, very excellent Mon, I feel, that Matt can use very, very efficiently. It does get access to Slack Off, which does help replenish its health. It does get access to some, I think, Thunder Fang at the very least, and Ice Fang, which is really cool in my opinion. Uh, but Stealth Rocks as well is really cool. Can he make access of the Sand? Not really, not right now. I don't believe he, I don't believe Matt did draft anything later on that benefited from the sand, but still, uh, being able to take away sand from other potential users of sand is really, really nice. And so, uh, excellent pick by Matt. I really like it. It's a bulky ground type that he will be able to use really, really well with his team. Agreed, agreed. Um, Matt hasn't dropped below the 10 points, which is ridiculously all. high. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, Hippowdon is really, really benefiting. Um, I'm seeing here it's going to be taking hits nicely that would hinder the Weavile. Um, you know, it's going to match nicely with the Chandelure. But besides the, the water weakness they have there, um, could probably use a little more water resist. But, you know, that grass type is coming soon. Can't wait to see what he picks up here. But I think Hippowdon is great. As you were mentioning, the slack off, the, the rocks up. It's a great mod. Really, really great mod. And here comes the, the good doggo, the another good electric doggo with Boltund. Um, you actually talked me out of uh, picking Boltund, but uh, I actually enjoyed uh, the fact that Boltund is a physical electric type user. And it does get access to some very interesting moves. I mean, it gets access to Psychic Fangs, which we only saw recently added back in the Sun and Moon days. Uh, it has access to Crunch as well. Uh, and Wild Charge is such an all-round impressive attack. Uh, the only thing that it does hinder on is you have to, you do have to use Volt Switch, which is unfortunate. But for five points and the speed that you get Volt Volt Hunt uh, with, I do agree that it is a reliable electric type for uh, for five points. But what are your thoughts on this? Uh, it is not a Jolteon. Like we we all can agree, it's not a Jolteon. Uh, but Balhound, you know, Jolteon gets the immunity, which Balhound, Balthound doesn't. And it's a good mod. It, I'm not going to lie. It's a good mod. It was very difficult for me to use. Don't say it's going to be difficult for DJ to use. Um, but, you know, as you were mentioning, it is, um, it has strong jaw, which is going to benefit it a lot. It gets competitive. I don't know if I've seen anyone use the competitive set yet, but it's good. It gets access to player rough, um, fault switch isn't bad. Its speed isn't bad. I think it's like 119, 121. You know, it's Jolteon's up there. at 130, 121. It's definitely up there. Um, it's up there. It's up there. It's up there. Um, it's a good mod. It's a good mod. It's not the worst mod. If you need an electric type, it's going to get the job done 100%. Um, just don't rely too much on it, but. You know, it's going to get him a me uh, momentum, especially for his team. Electro types, they're fun. And He's there it is. Fun. And there it is, Squid. The, uh... the Trick Room user, the... Oh my god, we let this thing get behind screens. Yeah, this, this, Reuniclus, this energy here now. Reuniclus going so far in, what, what round two, four, six, round seven is so shocking to me because Reuniclus was one of those months that everyone was vying after first three rounds back in the day and so to see it go this late is honestly shocking and paired beautifully with Alolan Ninetales and like I said the fact that now that he does have that trick room potential for his slower mons now this team is scary this team now is top tier and I'm very excited to see what Zeminin has in store. What do you have to say about uh, Rina Klus here? Uh, no, yeah, as you mentioned, behind the screen, we're talking about, he's picking up all these slow mods, he needs fast mods, he needs fast mods. But, you know, <laughs> we didn't mean pick up Rina <laughs> That's not what we <laughs> meant whatsoever. Um, we know this thing gets acid armor. We know this thing gets calm mind behind a sub iron defense. I, well not even a sub but behind behind the screens iron defense it's like no what like who in his that was arthur that was arthur whispering in his ear saying yo pick up reuniclus dude it's gonna destroy pretty everyone much man pretty much 
<laughs> but I think it's an amazing pick. Uh, amazing pick. It's another. It's like it's on Preston level. As soon as he added the Torkel, the synergy was coming off. As soon as he added Reuniclus, the synergy off this team is ridiculous. It's, I absolutely it's, agree. And then I surprised everyone by jumping out of the lower than uh, ten point range, and I went ahead and I picked up the big boy of Mammal Swine. Now, I absolutely love this pick because Mamoswine is a Pokemon that I have never used before. Surprisingly, in all the years I've done LDL, I've always wanted it, but I knew I could never get it. Or I picked it up too soon. This does give me a double ground type, but once again, I've said it before, you can never have too many ground types, and these two ground types do completely different things. Quagsire is there for the bulk, Mamoswine is there to make your day terrible. Planning for ground and ice stab is so d difficult and it's one of the main responses to Tangela which I absolutely love that I have now it's kind of the thought process I had but uh, being able to you know get stealth rocks throw off earthquakes throw off icicle crashes have access to ice shard as well for some very fast dra uh, dragon types makes this such a very hard mon to prep for and I feel like right now I've had the mons that I have to make a decent core and now I'm going to be jumping around where I need to to round off everything I need to. But what are your thoughts on me picking up Mammal Swine? Because I remember how did every we let Mammal Swine, like how did we let Mammal Swine go this long? Exactly. I remember when I drafted this mon, everyone started to freak out. Like, oh damn, Mammal Swine, what's going on? Yeah, like it just it flew under everyone's radar. Uh, Mammal Swine is no joke whatsoever. Um, I love this mod. I've used it before. It's it's so good. It's ridiculously good. Um, it's typing of ground and ice typing. You know, usually ground type, you think, oh, let me switch into a grass type. Hey, it's also a nice type. It's like, are you kidding me? Like, what can really switch in? It gets knockoff, as you were mentioning, and the, and the rocks and the rock chim. It doesn't get triple axle. Thank the Lord it doesn't. Damn um, it. I would have quit. But... I would have quit. But it's a really good mod, and the ice shard priority, like bro, solid pick. It de it definitely is. I'm I'm very shocked to finally have it. And like I said, as far as my team, like I don't even for my own team, like looking at it on paper, like I kind of just chose mods at the end of the day. I felt like, but like more and more that I'm looking at it, like the more I'm seeing that like my team doesn't need to really have synergy at times but there's some weird odd synergies going at the same time if that makes sense yeah it's very weird yeah i know i don't know it's been a while since i've been a been in draft leagues and so who knows what the hell lies for the salt lake city swampers but moving on a very excellent pick that i really liked here was beard picking up frost lass i feel like this is such an underrated ice and ghost type here uh that i really really love I feel like it pairs extremely nicely. It's one of those, like I said before, in regards to speed, this is one of those faster mons that uh, not a lot of people look at. It is a Blizzard user, 100% if you're able to set up hail. It is you can take wonderful access of its uh, Snow Veil ability, which boosts its evasion in hail, which is all the gimmicks in the world. Excellent setup as well. Um, I think it actually gets access to spikes if I'm not mistaken. Uh, what do you think about Beard picking yeah. up Frostless here? It's a Beard pick, man. <laughs> it <laughs> like, really is. <laughs> it's a Beard pick. Um, it's another Destiny Bond user. Um, it's fast. I, I like it. I, as you were mentioning, you know, fight, uh, fast biker um, Destiny Bond. Um, you know, I feel like sometimes ice types are overlooked in this meta but like you gotta think about ice types i don't know if it gets freeze dry but like freeze dry is phenomenal i know mammoth swine gets it cough cough um so that's gonna be something to watch out for and jacobish but super nice i what? think no i would I think, never i think ghost types is phenomenal though um ghost types are amazing they get access to like will-o-wisp um you know the destiny bond Shadow Ball, only thing that resists it, or, or immunity in in normal types and resist in dark types. So, like, if you lack one of those two, you're you're going to be taking a Shadow Ball, Absol especially from this thing. Absolutely. So, I think this is a great pick. And so, we're going to go ahead and, and it gets Levitate. That's his ability, right? Levitate. I, uh, Speaking of Levitate, 
Vigavolt. Vigavolt. Yeah. Flip, man. This is such a beautiful pick. Very... Vigavolt, probably one of... As we were mentioning, electro types are fun. Vigavolt is, def is the definition of fun. A absolutely. It's... I, um, I can't you can agree slap with a mag more. You can slap a magnet on this thing and it hurts. Yeah, this thing gets agility and that is like you start screaming. Um, it's another throat spray bug buzz user like man this mon is amazing it gets defog it gets roost uh, we got vault switch i think this is a phenomenal pick and it's only eight points that's a steal absolutely no but special attack stat is absolutely atrociously high and so the fact that i see it for only eight points is definitely still here uh for the victinis to pick up and for the wheel pick he's gonna go ahead and draft arcanine with it and here is where i actually got sniped for the first time i actually was told by a very specific squid that is um that is blazing to hold off on arcanine it can go one more round and i was gonna draft it but it went to the Victor Real Victinis, but thankfully I did have a backup plan originally in place before I saw Arcanine, so I wasn't fully upset with it, but no, all in all, Arcanine's a really awesome mon. I, it's tied with Incinero for my favorite mon, so I know everything and anything about this mon. Uh, incredible abilities with uh, Justified uh, and, and Intimidate. They, they work so well together, and they can be used basically everywhere you have the justified for jirachi you have the intimidate to lower uh, physical attackers and just being able to swap that around is phenomenal get access to extreme speed wild charge flamethrower toxic stall will-o-wisp stall uh this mon really can do anything if you want it more bulky you have that morning sun you want it offensively then absolutely you can run this thing offensively arcanine is such an incredible pick and i'm very happy to see it go to uh a coach that i know will use it very very well and it pairs brilliantly with Vikavolt in my opinion because these are two mons uh, back to back it's really weird we, I always think of electric types and fire types almost coexisting in a weird way and I feel like Vikavolt with Arcanine really pairs nicely together agreed agreed um, we have the rock weakness you know stealth rock weaknesses um, but he complements his like with Jirachi Jirachi hopefully I think he adds something else uh, a ground type that would help with that weakness there um but yeah as we were mentioning stealth rocks not a huge issue anymore with these heavy duty boots so like i know he's gonna you know spartan 275 here has history he has the knowledge he knows how to apply it especially with an arcanine you know it's like it's that one episode who is it that rides an arcanine's back that's that was antony you remember that episode that was antony riding on arcanine's back um but yeah, no, these two go way, way, way back. It's basically his mascot, and the fact that Arcanine gets teleport now, it's that is so, so good. And I know I, I can see Antonio using it effectively already this season. Absolutely. And now coming up is going to be Beard picking up the Galarian Weezing, the Poison Fairy type. Uh, definitely a mon I'm not 100% up to date with, but if I'm not mistaken, its ability of a neutralizing gas just basically hinders all abilities useless if i'm not mistaken correct that is correct that is correct um still has access to levitate if he wanted to so that is no joke whatsoever um it's a great mod though it is a great mod it's i think the ultimate um obstacle stopper if i'm not mistaken like it, it was obstacle very very nicely um it gets what's misty steam or something like that or strange beam something like that for its fairy stab um gets defog it's a very interesting defogger without a doubt here but i i think its ability of neutralizing um just unburdens neutralizing uh magic bounds and stuff like that is going to be very very beneficial for beard and his team here uh, absolutely and being able once again to just round off that uh Fairy Dragon Steel Core is really, really nice. I feel in regards to, you know, if he doesn't choose to bring Levitate, uh, Noivern really does handle that well, especially with Magnazone and Galarian Weasling both being uh, weak to ground types. And then, once again, 
the weaknesses that each one really has just really bounces off the other which i really think is gonna work uh very beneficial for beard and then yeah i'm, I'm very interested to see how glarian wheezing performs and who knows definitely amon i might want to draft in the future but uh because your boy did get sniped i went with my original plan i was gonna stay very very low tier with a lot of my picks until i saw mammoth went arcanine uh but because of that i dropped very very low like, I think I'm one of the first people, if not the first coach, to drop below four points in the entire uh, draft at this point. And I picked up Torcat. Now, Torcat is like mini Incineroar and mini Arcanine all at once. I get access to my Intimidate user. I get Fake Out. I get the setup. Um, I don't get Justified. Okay, big whoop. But no, Torcat actually has something that Incineroar doesn't. And that is a base 90 speed. Which I think is something that I definitely needed on my team to help round off some speed stats. I really don't have a lot of mons with higher speeds. I think my only one right now is Jolteon. But I feel like uh, Torcat is definitely one of those very slept on middle evolutions that you need to look out for. Because this thing can set up and this thing will take lives. And I definitely want to figure out a way to make Torcat shine this season and make him one of my top killers. And so I'm very happy to have it. It was one of my original plans before I got quote unquote sniped with Arcanine. But what do you think about this squid? Yeah, it's Orca. It's it's great. It's great. The EVLI, I love it. On um, dude, just adding EVLI on certain mods, you already have two. You have now Tangela and now it's Horacat, who can both rock it. Just have to be careful with that knockoff. But getting those those defensive and special defense boosts by 50 percent is annoying how do i know that because i used to like fat draft fat bat all the time if i could i would just slap an evli on that um but the fact that it gets um it still gets intimidating which is good you know we, we were talking about it's it's a bit nerfed on certain abilities but that's what draft league is for like you can prep around that you can plan around that um Still giving you an interesting fire type to complete your very interesting water grass fire core. No kidding. <laughs> it's, uh, I t I it's not even 20 points altogether. It's, Dude, it's, it's 13 points. points altogether. It's 13 points. It's one mammal swine. It's one mammal swine. That's, you see, three months, but it's actually more than one mammal swine. As Kingdom Hearts says, three half pints make a whole pint. Hey. Well, make a, a pint and a half. Uh, just want a girl to tell me that if there's a girl out there just let me know that um but no it's a great pick i love it it's a solid pick for two points phenomenal and uh he got the ice core he got the he got the ice uh team that was very shocking to see here with alolan sand slash uh it's a great pairing it's a very very great pairing alolan sand slash does suffer from you know that that uh fire and uh fighting weakness but he has conk to help with that and Rhyperior and Reuniclus can even set a uh, trick room up for him and so there's speedy sand slash there is slow sand, sl sand slash and trick room there is a rapid spinner now for him I like this pick this pick fits so nicely uh, with Zeminin's uh, team I have nothing bad to say about this pick and it's definitely top like alongside the little nine tails top tier uh, Alolan moms yeah, no, alone in sand slash. Um, dude, this thing is still a rapid spinner, so like that's adding a nice rapid spinner to his team here. <sighs> pairing it with the the veil, pairing it with the ice, I think it's gonna be really fun. Um, it's not the strongest, but it's still it's still it's pretty hard. I'm not gonna lie, alone in sand slash still can pre pretty hard. Um, I really like um, the ice plus the um, steel typing. You know, the only thing I think it's an issue when you're facing fire and steel types and water types. I think those are the three that will probably be an issue. But outside of that, um, this thing hits hard really and nicely. And then this was, was this a, a snipe on you as well? Did DJ snipe you twice now? No, no, no. I, I didn't want this mod. I didn't? Okay, I could have sworn someone was talking about this and got felt sniped. But Runa Regis, um, definitely a 
different mon altogether. You can't really call it a Galarian Cofagrigus because it's a mon in all of its own, being uh, Ghost and Ground type. Could have made it a Rock type in my opinion. Felt it fit, fit better, but you know, we're moving on. Uh, I really don't know what this mon does as opposed to Cofagrigus. Do you? I do not know either. Uh -huh. I feel like it's just the same thing. I'm looking at here, it's, it gets access to Toxic Spikes. It has the same access to all the moves, basically. It just would have like a stab earth power. That's, I think that's like the only difference because it has a 145 defense and a 105 special defense, which is exactly the same as Kofirigus. I guess it's the same thing. I guess the best way to kind of use this uh, Runarigus as in regards to its ability then is just being able to take advantage of its Wandering Spirit ability, which where a lot of people got this confused with money, Mummy for a while on regular Kofagrigus, where if it's hit by a contact move, the abilities actually swap. It's not like Mummy goes, it's not like Mummy where it just becomes Mummy. No, the abilities actually swap, so there could be some definitely some fun shenanigans here. You know, have a Tracheon hit it, and then all of a sudden you get a Justified boost when you're hit by a Dark-type move, or uh, a Speed boost from a Scolipede. You know, that's definitely some fun exactly. shenanigans. Some definitely some fun shenanigans that could definitely uh, come around, so I'm interesting to see what DJ uh, comes up with this for sure, because... Uh, you never know. Like I said, this is a mod that Squid and I aren't 100% on. Uh, as far as knowing, doesn't mean it's a bad mod. Oh, by no means. Uh, it's just that we haven't uh, been able to effectively look at it and battle it or use it ourselves to make an honest opinion over it. So with that, I think we're going to go ahead and move on to our next pick, which is going to be... My computer wants to work here, please. Lycanroc Dayform. And once again, another fast paced uh, mon that Matt definitely knows how to use. Does this thing get Sand Rush? Because if it does, with it powered on, that is broken. Let us see. I uh, feel like it does. I feel like it does. I'm pretty sure I think he was like telling me before he picked. Because I, I, I remember it, dude, he it was gets, messaging dude, me. Dude, it gets Sand Rush. <laughs> Did this, How did you guys let this happen? How did the other 11 coaches let this happen? I legit said that I don't think Matt will be able to pick anything to, for it to work with Sand, but he actually did. That is a very excellent move, Matt. Oh my gosh. You also get access to the Excel Rock. You get access to Crunch. You don't get access to the Tough Claws, unfortunately. But, I mean, being able to double your speed in Sand, I mean, that's, that's pretty lit, bro. I'm not going to lie. I really like that a lot base 115 attack you have access to close combat as well uh just make sure you hit your damn stone edges at the end of the day dude make sure you hit your your stone edges <laughs> so i was wrong you see i thought these things only had brick break if they get close combat that is ridiculously they scary get, no he gets close combat i don't know if that's a new gen 8 thing but it gets play rough as well bro um, oh, there's yeah, it's, yeah, close combat. Stealth, All of them get close stealth combat. Stealth rocker, oh, Zen gosh. headbutt. Yeah, this is definitely oh, this is definitely be. a good mod for Matt to pick up. I'm I'm happy to see uh, Matt pulling some shenanigans here. But moving on, we see Blaze picking up a new fairy type to join the uh, ever expanding fairies of Al Creamy. I'm wondering what flavor he is going to go with, and the topping. I'm going we'll to, to find out. I'm going to say mint strawberry. Mint strawberry. Is... <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how I feel about that. But, but he... creamy. It's an interesting dragon fairy steel coin here. Like, De it definitely like... is. It's something you don't really see. I mean, you have such high power of each slash. You have the underrated flygon, and then you have the unknown of Al creamy. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. definitely. Hey. It does get. A... I believe like Al Creamy is probably a trick room setter. I would like. I feel like I have a strong hunch it would be. Um, I I think the thing is pretty bulky. If no. I'm not mistaken, it gets pretty nice setup. No, um, not a like not a trick room user. Definitely a wonderful not. special bulk. It does get access to Calm Mind though. Base 110 special attack. Base 121 special defense. So definitely a special attacker. 
Uh, its speed lacks around 64, but it does get access to Recover, which is phenomenal, as well as Mystical Fire for those pesky steel types. So, um, definitely an interesting fairy type. I feel like Blaze might have grabbed it just to get a fairy type Mon, but looking more so at things, he does have uh, quite a bit of physically defensive typings and physically built, uh, physically defensive built Mons. So maybe this is just his way of trying to get that special defensive mod working on his side while also picking up a fairy type. Okay, yeah, just get acid armor. That's what I thought. I feel like I've seen that. Okay, so no trick room, but it gets acid armor. So it's uh, it's an interesting mod. It's an interesting mod because it's you know it's not a wish passer as we may hope, and his defenses are okay. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about Al Creamy honestly well i know how i feel about this pick um i think max rapture is definitely covering his ground with this porygon picking up pharaoh seed excellent pick i mean porygon 2 and pharaoh thorn excellent together pharaoh seed just as good man because i mean throw that once again throw an evil light on this thing and this thing does not want to die alongside porygon 2 you do have that big uh adding to the fighting weakness that you were mentioning Finding weakness, yes. However, I feel like once again, uh, having double EVL light user also makes your team very knockoff heavy or knockoff weak as well, which is something that you should be cautious with. But all around, I feel like pairing it with Porygon 2 is really, really good in the long run. As long as you're able to find that one mon that is able to help with those fighting types 100%, like say a ghost type or something along those lines, I really, really like this. Here he's got now. Uh, He's got the spike set up. He's got definitely a mon that could uh, hurt you a little bit with Rocky Helmet and uh, Iron Barbs. I like this pick. I like this pick. Um, my real question is how long it will last. Uh, Pharaoh Seeds usually don't last long, so I really do hope that Max Rapture, you know, just maximizes its potential in the draft league format. He already has Mel Metal, so I'm not 100% sure how far this feral scene might come but we'll see when we get there and here we go Preston is going double a weather with Tyranitar now he picked up Torkoal last round and he jumped all the way back up to pick up your boy Tyranitar that is a very interesting pick I feel like uh, there it's definitely two sets of teams that he's been drafting here the entire time. Uh, Heliolisk being able, once again, to fit perfectly into both. But here, I mean, this is where Ferrothorn can definitely help shine alongside Tyranitar, which I think is beautiful. Here you, we've been talking about Ferrothorn and Venusaur and them being going back to back. You know, we're not 100% sure what's been going on. I think Preston had an idea the entire time as soon as no one really picked up Tyranitar next to their uh, Excadrill right away. So I think this works really, really well. Mew can definitely work in between everything. Primarina definitely can. Venusaur, not so much in the sand. Uh, but no, this is definitely an, a very late game Tyranitar pickup that I think honestly shocked a lot of us. Yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt, Tyranitar... You know, it kind of the mentality I was going into this game that I wanted to draft two different teams, and I completely failed at that. But you know, that is the VGC mindset, and Preston is bringing that to the singles draft format, and it's it's scary. It is very scary. It really is. And uh, heading into your team now, your next pickup, you went ahead and picked up the the chunky boy of Lantern. Yes, sir. Uh, what made you uh, choose Lantern here, Squid? Lantern. Lantern, I just... Uh, Dracofish is a great water type. But, once again, I was thinking I was talking about the whole pre-marina. It just kind of goes through my team. So I wanted actually to have its own individual grass water fire core. And Lantern getting the water absorb and getting the volt absorb as either of its ability is phenomenal because that's two immunities right off the bat. Uh, this thing is a fantastic ball switcher. It gets heal bell if I wanted to. Um, he has a great HP stat. Lantern is a great mod. It's a phenomenal mod. I, I don't think you can ever go wrong with going um, picking up Lantern and then just 
as I was mentioning, pairing it with tank growth, um, you know, tank growth is weak to what? To bug, to flying, and to poison. To ice, poison, and like Lantern resists the ice, resist the flying, and the rest of the team can really work out with all those other weaknesses with no problem. Pretty much. I really like this pick. Yeah, no. Uh, just having that extra... Like, this is kind of like how I felt with uh, with my two ground types. Like, one does one thing, one does the other. So there's there's definitely does hinder me with having both of them on the team. And you've done this excellently now. Uh, now keeping people guessing. It's like, well, can I attack Jacobish with this object move? Or am I... Can I hit this thing with a water... Can I hit x control with a water move, maybe? Or... Is, Lantern gonna come in and just like wreck my day because now you're keeping people guessing every single week and I think that's just beautiful. Yeah, and I think going back to season nine, I had Alamomola and Greninja. Like it was, it, it was, was hard for people to <laughs> find out. And here we have Steelix going with the Iowa Cub choose. Uh, I like Steelix. I remember my two week run with having a Mega Steelix before I disappeared from uh draft leagues for a while i feel a definitely uh matches the kind of bulkiness that's been going on here with the cub chews for a while pairs really nicely with gudra with the with that dragon fairy silk core with whimsicott uh then you got the bulkiness with Slowbro as well i feel like it just fits really really well it's a mon that is very hard to take down especially with that leftovers and it can just it just hits very very hard with that earthquake as well yeah, it's an interesting, I gotta admit, it's another interesting fairy dragon steel core here. Uh, but yeah, the, the defenses on Steelix are off the chart. Uh, I love its defenses, you know, it's it gets the fangs, it gets the, the setup with the rocks. Um, this is a great body press user as well. We, like, these defensive mons getting body press is so, so good now in this gen, in this meta. So I, I like this flick a lot too. It's an interesting Dragon Fairy Steel Core, but... Oof, this pick. Grim Snarl. Uh, King Arthur is starting off the wheel pick here, uh, heading into the end of round two, four, six, eight. End of round eight here. Grim Snarl is extra scary with that prankster ability. I feel Arthur is going to have a freaking heyday in regards to prankster uh with grim snarl it's such an interesting typing it's so cool how they designed it but prankster just makes this seem extra extra evil if you ask me uh no yeah it's um the prankster with the the screens <sighs> you know we were so worried about zemanon and his Hello, the nine tail with screens. Now we have to worry about Dragon Ball behind the scenes, uh, Savali behind the scenes, Scissor behind the scenes, Cinderace. You know, it's a it's a huge, huge compliment to his team, 100%. Um, I love it. You know, I love the fact that it gets the prankster bulk up. Yes, That's absolutely. It's also great. And then let's throw me and Shao in uh, while we're at it. Me and Shao is definitely a fighting type that is. Oh, it's like often overlooked, I feel, and people don't give it enough credit because they're more afraid to use it for its high jump kick than anything else. Because, of course, once you miss high jump kick, 50% of your health is gone because it keeps going and it crashes. But Bian Xiao, having the speed that it's at, being able to rock out with so many U-turns such early game with that reckless ability, it just hits so hard. And I feel uh, paired up with... The Pokemon like Dragapult, Scizor, Sylveon, being able to pass off those wishes and everything, it definitely adds to the longevity of Mianxiao as well. In fact, I think Mianxiao even gets Regenerator on top of that as well. It does, it does. I think, I love its speed stat at 105. You know, outspeeding anything that's base 100. Um, it's a good speed tier. Um, just, yeah, Regenerator makes it a great, great mod. Regenerating Mons is so annoying to deal with. Um, love is move pool. I wish it got the punches. That probably like I think would be off the charts, but still regardless. How can it punch through those things though? <laughs> hey man, um, doesn't like Bre Breloom? Is it Breloom? I think Breloom. It still learns has fists. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now moving on to the Iowa Cup shoes here. 
It's a very good pick. Interesting pick, actually. Yeah, Poltegeist is definitely uh, one of those new mods that people thought was going to be good because it had access to uh, Shell Smash, if I'm not mistaken, and then it kind of went into obscurity. Uh, hopefully, Carlos will be able to get an authentic Sinisty. I mean, sorry, Poltegeist. Uh, you know, make make sure all logistics and it's an authentic and you know, take it to Pawn Stars and all that stuff. But no, Poltegeist is very, very fun to use. Uh, I really like its signature move. I think it's just a very interesting take on such a unique typing. And like you said, ghost types are usually one of those types of mons that not a lot of people draft for sure. Uh, as you'll see as people are running off their drafts, some people are kind of uh, straggling to grab them. But I feel like this definitely fits into such a power, uh, such a prevalent fighting type weakness that he developed over his last two picks and this is definitely him just covering his tracks here which I really like yeah agreed agreed it's it's you don't want to be too weak to fighting uh, especially when ghosts uh, not ghosts I want to say poison types aren't a necessary grab in in draft league format and uh, many people would draft poison types so you want to, something that can take on fighting types uh, besides your fairy so i think this is a solid solid pick um not 100 percent sure of all the moves it gets but it's good and here comes america here comes your boy braviary which jesse misspelled look at this it's braviary <laughs> it's very <laughs> but it's fine it, it, it's it's fine on the on the list here um man i actually the thought process into this pick I don't know. I knew I was going through after picking up Scrafty and six points, picking up Lantern and six points. Uh, kind of, I knew nobody was going to take Gigalith um, for Excadrill, and I know, I know there was something else that I was eyeing. Oh, my Fire type. Everybody had a Fire type, so I said, you know what? Those mods were safe, but I did want a Flying type and a good Flying type. And then I saw Brady Yari there on the board. Said, you know, why not? It gets defiant. It's a, it's a defogger. It's a it gets U-turn. It gets um besides defiant, it gets um, sheer force, which is really good. I thought this was a really good pick and hopefully a steal, and nobody was eyeing it. But little did we know it was a snipe for somebody else. Shocking. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I feel like everyone was sniped. This was a little bit of a snipe for me, I'm not going to lie. I was definitely eyeing this as uh, something to really give me an extra speed. And all around Amon, I've really wanted to use just for the fun shenanigans that come with it. And so Preston definitely sniped me here with a Selgor. Excellent bug type. Has access to Water Shuriken because it's a ninja, because why not? But throwing a choice specs on this thing and just clicking Bug Buzz, or at this point, even now, a Throat Spray. Like, this thing's going to be hitting absolutely like a tank. And uh, having, I think, his base 145, if I'm not mistaken. I think he's around base 145 or something like that. Uh, U turns is very, very fun and very, very cool. And. Uh, in regards to his team, it's a bug type that definitely works in and out of both his Sun and Sand team, so all around a really good pick. Agreed, agreed. It's a uh, good pick. You know, um, this thing gets webs, right? I believe so, yes. I believe so. So yeah, the webs is phenomenal. Um, this is the fastest, I think, Mon that can access to that Throat Spray, which is ridiculous. Like, good i've seen uh magnitude use it before or pokemon's trainer steve it's really really good for eight points don't think it's horrible horrible it's pick um you get what spikes you get the priority um water shuriken uh it's a fast u-turner you get endeavor it's a really really good mod um complements his team nicely absolutely uh, this team is already it's a headache it really is all right, now heading into, we have broken the 100 barrier squid. Uh, we're heading into now the Tasmanian Toxicroak, speaking up the Hitmon Top. Uh, Hitmon Top, of course, is just seen as one of the higher end of the Hitmons as far as uh, capabilities. Has access to that Intimidate, and so he has that Intimidate core with Crocodile, which I really, really like. We were talking about that bulkiness and that uh, fighting type issues. Yeah, we were. Uh, we were. Uh -huh. 
uh, if you want to take it for here, I actually have to take a call really quick. So go ahead and I will listen and I will uh, go to the next screen. So go ahead and just take this for a quick sec. Yeah, go for it. Uh, so him on top. We know him on top. Spinner. Uh, I hope he mutes himself. Okay, but um, so yes. Okay, now he muted himself. <laughs> okay, great. So uh, him on top. Um, we know Intimidate gets access to close combat. It's a great mod. Um, you know, I feel like it's sometimes overlooked. I think more recently it's been kind of being overlooked. Intimidate is still very, very good in this format. Um, it's a brick breaker, um, so we know it's going to be able to break screens. The fact that it gets the rapid spin. I love the fact that the rapid spin got the the buff this, this gen to, you know, it's 50 base attack plus you get a speed increase and him on top is not all that slow so getting a speed increase is going to be great uh, this thing with the berry is fantastic can't forget this thing still gets access to sucker punch um it gets triple axle i hate triple axle so this mon is going to be a a much of a nuisance for myself uh i think it's a great pick i think it's a great pick because um if i'm not mistaken i think one of the cores are like psychic fighting dark types not super common but the synergy that comes off of that like so espion um still uh fighting weakness i mean a fairy weakness but i think it it's okay and it's gonna work out for him and then we're gonna go into the winnipeg jellicence picking up serena here oh man i think this is it's great because he needed the grass type um i think he was telling me he wanted something that was rapid spin potential as well um, it's ability of Majestic Queen. It's a Majestic T Queen or something like that that can stop priority attacks. So there is no ice shards hitting this thing. Uh, it gets drop kick, which drops special. I mean, not special attack. It drops attacks. Um, it's a U turner. It gets synthesis. This mod is not bad. This mod is not bad. And then we're pairing it with what? Keldeo. We're pairing it with. Um, Chandelor and Serena. So that as the water, fire, grass core is a really solid one. I gotta admit, it's a really solid one. You have speed in there. You have you have special attack in there. So I really like this one. I enjoyed it a lot, even though on paper it may not look like it, but like in game, you guys are gonna see that this is really, really solid. Then moving on to Who's next? Can I remember off the top of my head? Probably don't remember off the top of my head, but I do have here the um the page. Oh, the New Haven Charizards are going to be picking up Umbreon, adding more and more bulk to this team. Once again, good thing is we're playing on Chess Timer, so like it's now like a huge, huge nuisance. But Umbreon gains um, synchronized, you know, so you can't you can't really just freely toxic this thing or poison it or thunder wave it with, without expecting it to come back at you and bite you in the butt. Super super solid wish passer, which he he was lacking recovery on his team, and now this is a good way to get that recovery besides the Kunkelder Drain Punch, which was I think the only way he actually got recovery besides rest. So Umbreon, super bulky. Umbreon getting the wish passes. Um, Umbreon baton pass. Um, it's a foul play user, which is a little bit annoying for people that, like myself that love to set up, and then you have to face a foul play, which you probably won't even be able to kill in one hit KO because of the fat that Umbreon brings to the table. So I really like this pick. I really enjoy it, and it's just fantastic, especially for my boy Zeminon here. Next up, Salt Lady. City Swampers. I have returned. He came to me, has returned. Um, he was conflicted between Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee. I definitely it was. Like it was. It was like six-year-old Brennan when he was playing Pokemon. Did you play red or blue? I played yellow. Yellow. So he was playing yellow. He got to the dojo. He didn't know who to pick. <laughs> I really didn't, man. Because like Hitmonchan looked cooler, but, Hit but I didn't know that Hitmonlee was actually better than Hitmonchan. 
I always thought it was the other way around. I mean, that's just me. You can hear me, right? Yeah, I, I feel you. I always thought Hitmon, even as a kid, I always thought Hitmonchan was way better. But no, uh, once again, it's a, it's a typing I didn't have. And it, once again, it's one of those uh, situations of just trying to get a spinner on my team. I realized I didn't have one yet, and I definitely would like to have had one. Because at that point, I did have setup as far as hazards. But I only had like a defogger in a uh, high dragon. And so I definitely wanted a spinner just in case, and Hitmonlee definitely fit that bill, but Hitmonlee with its ability in Unburden um, and just some of its movesets as well, definitely allows it to be more beneficial outside of just being a rapid spinner, which is uh, what I really, really like. But with that boost to rapid spin as well now, giving it that plus one speed, it's definitely a lot more utility and setup attacker if I if need be and so I'm very excited to use this one I've never used one before and so like this is definitely you know this is a lot of fun for me to say like yeah bro I got the freaking Hitmonlee what up with, with uh, what up with you I, I think it's a great pick I, I love this pick 100% um, dude unburdened phenomenal 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 uh, especially with the white herb you can close combat you can curse um you know priority with sucker punch mag punch it's a it's a great mod it's a great pick i was talking about a great pick i actually thought about grabbing this mon for a third ground type i'm not even gonna lie i honestly thought about getting this mon uh, i almost got it instead of mammal swine uh, but then I almost wanted to pick it up as well. We got some Diggersby coming in for Beard, man. And Diggersby is that dude. I mean, we know what we know what it is. That Diggersby though. Diggersby though. Huge power makes the thing an absolute Diggersby, monster. Uh, I'm an access to that quick attack as well after it wants to set up on you agility or uh, sword stance. I think it gets just all around an absolute wrecking house return earthquake thunder punch i mean this bunny is throwing hands but i don't need to use the tanks are you gonna use the mirrors but an excellent yeah uh, an excellent answer to help with this ground type weakness that he did suffer from uh the only problem is is making sure that rilla boom's uh, uh, uh hidden ability doesn't hinder diggers b with everything hopefully it gets um high horsepower so I am not 100% sure there, but hopefully it does do that. So I love this pick though. I, I think Diggers B um, in the right team, in the right format, it can really, really be a huge, huge. Actually, there we go. I mean, this thing is meant still. to really put down the hurt. That's what it was. I knew it was speed. something like that, but still, this thing is absolute. This thing can hurt, regardless if it's the little brother we vow. This is don't talk to me or my little brother again because they're both coming for you with the same stuff, and you know. It's very difficult to plan for. Weavile is difficult, difficult to plan for, and Sneasel does the exact same thing. And so I feel this is an excellent pick to fit into his team. Uh, agreed. Um, I, I think I suggested this one to him. It was, it, I was like, he wanted speed. This thing is a speedy little bugger. A triple axle. Triple, you, bro, axle. triple, axle, triple axle. I have nightmares. I still have nightmares. 
if you lose to this thing, I'm Squid, it is you are bl it is your own fault. I'm just letting you know that right now. It's on my channel, bro. It's on my channel. <laughs> but yes, no, this thing is. Uh, I love this mod. This, it's a good mod. It's you know we were mentioning knockoff is, it's crucial for the draft league format. He gets that. The fast ice shard user still gets the fake out priority. He has the first impression priority. This team is coming together very nicely. And his wheel pick, he's going to go ahead and pair that up with the Politoed. Uh, very, very interesting to see Politoed here. I think it helps round off his uh, water fire grass core. Politoed more so seen as the lesser unused uh, what, uh, rain setter now. I mean, it can potentially work well with a Vikavolt if Vikavolt wants to throw out some Thunders. But all in all, Politoed is more seen so as a, just a bulky water type uh, if need be. Very interesting to see this go instead of, say, a Vaporeon, which I think honestly might have gone undrafted this season. Spoiler alert. Um, but yeah, what, what are your thoughts on this, Squid? Uh, it's an interesting pick. Um, it's always an, it's an interesting pick when you pick up the weather setter before you you use the or you pick up the one that benefits from it you know like an extra joe's case if you pick up extra joe it's a good mod and then when you pair with the sand it's like it's an even better mod so in this case we we have polysode but it's like where his where's his swift swim user so it's kind of like uh yeah he could have picked up vaporeon so but it's like he has something cooking up on his sleeve here um and there's a lot of good Swift Swim users out there left. So I'm actually really interested. I like it. I like it as a water type, but he's going to pair it with an even better water type. Um, but I, I, Politoed has always been an interesting pick for me. Very interesting. Um, I feel like it's very limited when it's smooth set, uh, but you can like have fun shenanigans with like Parish Song. Icy Wind to slow down um, some Mons as well. Icy Wind. That, that, that's, those are stuff you can do. Uh, it's pretty bulky. I'm not gonna lie. This thing can take hits, so that's no joke there. Um, but I'm just really more interested in finding out what he's gonna pair with. Absolutely. Now, a uh, little spoiler alert. Sorry about that. I clicked the button one too many times. We're heading into Beard, who is picking up some Zatu shenanigans. I like this mod. Zatu is definitely underrated. I've seen a Zatu bring back a match from the depths of a defeat. Which is very, very shocking to see because of its, uh, what is it, Synchro Noise ability? Or, uh, no, no, what is it? Magic Bounce. I know magic, it's bounce. magic Bounce. No, no, it's, you think it's Sword Power? Sword Power, Maybe. uh, yeah, Sword Power, Magic Bounce, and then being able to pass off like a Flame Orb. Uh, burn set to its opponent. What is that? What is that oh, move? Where, Psycho Shift. Psycho Shift, there it is. is it Definitely some fun shenanigans there. I do believe it gets access to U-turn as well. Uh, psychic flying type that you definitely don't want to sleep on for sure. It does give him double typing though, but then again, I feel like we're at that point of the draft where everyone's just trying to grab things to round off uh, their points. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, yeah, Zatsu though. It's, it's a magic bounce user. I, I'm not sure what else like... I know Magic Bounce, Defog, Roost, U-Turn, pretty that's, standard. That's about it. <laughs> that's about it. I don't think there's really much to it. All right, we'll, we'll go ahead and move on now if my slides want to keep up with me. Come on now. I'm not hitting the button again because I know I hit it. Let's go. There we go. Uh, Salt Lake City Swampers are going to go ahead and pick up the Toxicroak. I really like this mon. It is a dry skin user, which I really, really like. And my fun thing that I enjoy uh, wanting to use Toxicroak, yes, I do have a really big weakness to uh, Psychic with my last couple picks, but I do have uh, Bronzong and Hydreigon right there just waiting to come in and uh, wreck some face. And my fun thing with Toxicroak is I have the potential to set up on a physical and a special side of things. And I've definitely planned for one set of toxic rock before and have been swept by a completely other set and so i'm really am hoping to uh keep my opponents guessing squid said it before poison type is really a type that we don't see drafted a whole lot so i definitely wanted to try something different and draft a mon that i am not 100 percent used to kind of like how it was with hitmonlee 
and I definitely went into this with a different game plan now that I've drafted Toxic Croaks for my next mod for sure, uh, which you guys will see here in a little bit, but I really like Toxic Croak, but what do you think about this squid? Uh, it's a great mod. It's was it, it gets um it gets storage dense. I'm pretty sure I know that. Uh, it's a dry skin user, so rip, Dracovish. Um, it's an interesting typing, being poison and fighting. So it's you know it's kind of got like that. Oh, fairy switch into fighting, but oh wait, it's also a poison type, and then poison types are like. Oh, I can easily switch in like a steel type, but it's like, oh, it's a fighting type. So it makes it very, very difficult to like, how do you play around this 100%? So it's a really, really good mod. I, I love it. I think it's a solid, solid pick. Um, with this team, it's interesting. Like you're going to double up in fighting types. So, you know, one week, maybe Himali, the other week, maybe Toxic Croak or maybe none who knows but I, I think i like this pick i really do once again remember poison types aren't like a necessarily but when you do draft them they're pretty good speaking of a mod that is a necessary that we have both uh we have both shared a memory with we have lurantis being picked up by a uh, now did you tell him to draft this or was this his own choice this was his own choice i did not tell him i would never want to face Laurentis, man. I love her Laurentis. Laurentis is such a good mod. You guys know Laurentis. Laurentis, superpower with the contrary. A but with the few this thing is gonna be um gonna be very, very annoying to deal with. Absolutely no, I completely agree. Uh, having to go up against uh one and accidentally critting one with a Hariyama. Um, what's up, Squid? I, I gotta say, it definitely pairs well. I really like it. And being able to have something like, I, since I wasn't able to talk about it, I'll quickly talk about it right here as we're moving on to the next slide, of uh, Umbreon being able to wish Baton Pass into stuff like that just adds to the longevity and adds to the uh, the fear of things like that setting up on, on things. But DJ is gonna go ahead and pick up Amon. I almost consider drafting in Snorlax, just because Snorlax is freaking Snorlax, my guys. Um, uh, Arthur definitely gave me a fantastic set. I literally ran every single week, and it worked. Uh, I don't believe that. Do the fifty percent every single week? Do the fifty percent berries exist in Gen Eight? I don't think they do anymore. Do they? No, they're they're thirty percent now. They're thirty percent. I mean, it's not the best, but definitely not the worst. It definitely hindered Snorlax, but no. Uh, thick Fat, I believe Gluttony, and uh, uh, what else? What is its last ability? Uh, immunity, so you can't poison it. Is definitely fun for this thing. You can go ahead and set up a Belly Drum if you really feel like it. I feel it's just another... It's definitely a bulky mon that this team needed. Uh, because I'm looking around, and yeah, you have Radon. Like, they're bulky, bulky mon that could be... Uh, utilize fully and I feel like Snorlax definitely fits that for deep. Oh yeah, this is um Snorlax. You know, it pairs. It pairs nicely with the Rotom fan, uh the Unaragus. It, it's a really really It definitely is. Um, here comes Comfey with Matt, and I don't sleep on Comfey anymore. Uh, what about you? Do you sleep on a Comfey? I I no longer do because I've seen Comfey putting the absolute finest of work. I want to say it was Pokemon I was watching uh, that 
had an incredible draining kiss calm mindset to uh, basically pick up any kill that it wanted to through a match and literally I think Comfey got like maybe four or five out of the six kills during the match just because Comfey's uh, ability being able to gain the priority on any healing moves with draining kiss definitely made it just such a very interesting uh, fairy type to use and it's a very very fast fairy type as well I want to say it's over base 100 somewhere around uh, that line and he yeah for speed and it's very shocking to see that right now while Matt very recently has two picks left he has now added uh, a fairy type to a fairy steel dragon core yet he does not have a dragon so I'm interesting to see what Matt utilizes for his last couple picks here but I really like this pick it is a different pick it is a fairy that definitely helps him with his drag with a dragon type immunity uh, but yeah, I like this pick. I'm not going to lie. Comfey should not be slept on. Yeah, agreed. I don't think it should be slept on either, 100%. Um, it's you, you, you touched on it, man. That Calm Mind with the Training Kiss. Um, I'm not sure if it can floral healing itself or if that's in doubles. Um, and I know, I, I think it used to get Hidden Power Fire. I'm not sure if it gets the Mystical Fire. I have the I have showed on here, actually all day. So let me pull it up real quick. But I, I feel like with all the correct threats gone, like any steel type, any poison type, this thing runs house. It, That's another thing. This thing actually gets um trick room. So it's a solid trick room user if he ever needed it to be as well. Very, very nice. And then now we here have Blaze, who actually sniped me here. I was gonna pick up Alakazam. I'm not gonna lie, I really did, because I had the points for him. Like, there's no way no one's gonna pick this up. But shockingly enough, uh, late game, uh, Blaze went ahead and uh, sniped me on the Alakazam here, and. What an incredible Mon. It fits perfectly to his team, an excellent speed stat, and now having access to the nasty plot squid. <sighs> yes. Uh, I was eyeing this Mon this stuff myself. If I didn't have a uh, Necrozma, this would have been my next um, pick for sure, psychic-wise. But what, base 120 speed, amazing, amazing speed stat, Magic Guard, makes it even better because you don't need those heavy de heavy duty boots you can just run your focus ash the fact it gets nasty plot Ex is the reason why i have my next pick um no yeah, yeah, but no i think this is a great great mod hands it down Exactly. Like I, it just honestly takes me back to season one of LDL when I drafted Mega Alakazam and the fun I had with that. This like having Alakazam here with Nasty Plot will definitely probably be season. But coming up now, we have the Galarian Corsola, uh, a thousand times better than Corsola could ever be. Throwing on that Evil Light boosts its defense to outlandish proportions. It can definitely stall you out. What do you think? Oof. Um, is that, there's that oh fighting man, immunity. This is funny, actually. Um, there is that fighting immunity. But <laughs> Max Rapture knows what Galarian and Corsola. Um, but but it's a good mod. Uh, he's been using it very. Um, he's using it in another league right now successfully. Unless it's the other one. It's Corsola and what's the other one? I don't know. I know he's using one of the Galarian Corsolas. Um, it's a very, very good mod. I love the app zipper. Um, it's got the willow. Uh, I'm not sure what else, man. I, it's bold. A third Eviolite user, but you know we'll have to see what what happens there. Three Eviolite users, you never know what's gonna happen. <laughs> 
Up next, though, we have the last of the Hitmons going to the Neo Show Necrozma. Uh, Hitmonchan having the Iron Fist's ability, Rapid Spin, of course, giving it that extra boost to the speed. A really cool Mon, a fighting type is something he definitely needed. And I'm pretty sure, I wasn't it you that brought a game back with a Hitmonchan a couple seasons back? Pretty sure. I know I had a Hitmonchan. I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah, I'm pretty, yeah, Hitmonchan definitely was uh, very scary to watch uh, take down some months. Of course, having access to elemental punches, uh, that chain punch as well for that longevity, definitely makes this a, a, a pretty heavy threat. And, you know, if used effectively, it doesn't have to be, you know, a bulkier mon. It can definitely be an offensive uh, powerhouse if used correctly. So I'm very excited to see what Preston has to do with this. Agreed, agreed. Uh, Hitmonchan. You touched on it. Um, those elemental punches with the iron fist. I love it. It still gets rapid spin. Still super, super good. Mm -hmm. uh, you went ahead and drafted Frostmoth. I am really interested in hearing what your thought process was here. You don't have a bug type. You don't have an ice type. There are two types that you we have touched on off and on about potentially having, potentially not having. What's your thought process here? Good amount of times. Um, so yeah, this is where kind of the whole helped me out because it's like hits by 50% is broken, in my opinion. Um, I don't have to worry. I'm going to be looking at that mon very, very closely when you bring it to battles. I'm not going to lie. Uh, here comes another ice type that you don't see a lot of love given to. It's that it's that Vanillux. You, get, you got the pot of tea, and then you know what, Squid? Why don't we go out and have us a, a, a good ice cream cone? How does that sound? <laughs> yeah, I think we deserve after the stream. <laughs> oh, dude, no kidding. Oh, my gosh. This took way longer than I thought. We're not even there yet. Uh, but, no, uh, I really like this. Definitely, once again, it's another mon that can throw out some blizzards. It has a very, very powerful special attack stack, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you can also rock out with some explosions if you really feel like it as well. Um, if you're able to hold on long enough for a hail Aurora Veil, because all ice types do get access to that, if I'm not mistaken. No, there is that, but... Once again, this is probably just something where, uh, you know, typings are just wanting to be round out. And I feel like ice typing, uh, probably not the best because it does add another fire, uh, fighting type weakness. But what are your thoughts here? Uh, I, I enjoy Vanillax, the fact that it gets the um, snow warning. Um, so that's a free blizzard with no issues whatsoever. Um, I guess he's kind of trying to complement the fact that he added the ghost type, so he now he's able to add another um, fighting weakness. Overall, kind of seems like his team is all over the places, but actually he just has a variety of different typings all around. Um, he's not repeating much typing, so I think it's a really, really solid pick. Um, ice types get slept on. It's actually pretty good offensive-wise. Plus, it gets freeze dry, so water types better watch out. Absolutely, or should I say, water dragon types? But a third ice type now to go in a row. Uh, Arthur's gonna go ahead and draft up the Rotom Frost. A Rotom, I don't think I've, I've probably only seen drafted maybe once or twice in every single draft league that not even I've been a part of, but in general that I've seen. So I'm gonna be very interested to see how this uh, pans out for. Arthur because I really like this pick. I think it's going to be fun to see how he utilizes it. Once again, it's a Rotom. We know what Rotom does, but having access to that ice type and then having that blizzard, you never know. There could be some fun shenanigans going on. What do you think, Squid? Agreed, agreed. Uh, yeah, I remember it. we were probably in the chat and then he was like, ugh, like he doesn't like Rotom Frost and then kind of like, oh, 
dude, it's it's what you're stuck with. Um, I think most electric types are gone, uh, especially eleven type users like the Rotoms here. Uh, you always kind of not mandatory to have an ice type, but it's not bad to have an ice type, especially ice electric is a nice typing here. It's another defogger. Um, put it on, then that's when it kind of becomes um, sticky. But had um, Rotom Frost in my PGL, it did me well. It really does. You don't always have to click Blizzard. Like, you know, you can ball switch out, keep us play safe. Like, you don't have to risk it all. Absolutely. And we're going to go ahead and see that he pairs that up with Vile Plume. I actually like this pick a lot. I have used a Vile Plume in the past. I feel like this it fits his team really, really well in a lot of different aspects. It really uh, allows him to play around more so with uh, the bulkiness of his team. He does get access to Strength Sap, which is probably one of the most fun moves to ever use uh, for a regenerative Mon. Uh, and for five points, I feel like this is an absolute steal, but at the same time, Vile Plume uh, can get access to some very powerful attacking moves, so I'm really excited to see what Arthur has to do with this as well. I mean, I probably said that for like the last seven picks, I'm not going to lie, it's very late, so excuse me if I start repeating myself. I know this is a bad habit of mine, but uh, Squid, what do you think about this? Uh, this pick here, man. Vile Plume. It, it didn't actually get it. I didn't understand it because Amoongus was still on the table. So it's like, if you're looking for... Like, Venusaur was gone, but Amoongus is still on the play uh, table here. If we're going for String Sap, stab, um, the String Sap, it's it's good. It's good, but I think Amoongus is better because you get the Regenerator uh, ability thrown in there. You get that nice 100% accurate Spore while you would have to run Sleep Powder here. This is more of a this mom benefits more if it had sun than it does anything else. Um, but yeah, 100%. I agree. Amoongus would have been the better pick. I don't think if, I don't know 100% sure if it was point wise that he didn't um, go for it or not, but just my thoughts. And now we come to Sigilith, a mon I pretty much know nothing about. It's a mon I lost the finals, um, play semifinals too. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. I that's choked. right. I literally told I you to look out for this thing. It, dude, I, I didn't think, you know, sometimes you would think your opponent doesn't bring the most obvious cosmic power set, and it's what they do. They bring the cosmic power set, and it's like, are you kidding me? Uh, but no, yeah, what, it rocks the cosmic power. You were talking about the psycho shifts, flame orb shenanigans, um, store power rocks in this pretty pretty nicely it's a good mod um except when you're facing i guess other psychic types sometimes it becomes difficult um but overall i think actually this is a really really good solid pick um it gets magic guard is it yes i'm pretty sure so, yeah so i know it doesn't get affected so that opponent um not our opponent here but our the coach Carlos doesn't have a really, really he good did solid one by him. And, someone, and something to keep opponents on their toes. But here, you finally were able to grab the sand soap, the Gigalith. You mentioned this earlier, that you were going to pick it up. And now you have a sand team that you can work with, with Excadrill. Really get the full beneficial uh, nature of what Excadrill can. Press of rock, Gigalith, and what, the 10th round? 2, 4, 6, 8, yeah, the 10th round. 11th round. 10th round. round. Um, Gigalith didn't have a rock typer I, I, I haven't used gigalith the best in the past
low in the point system. Um, it does pretty well. It's a fantastic um, spinner. Probably one of my favorite spinners in the game. Uh, mm. I know that it's sidekick, ground type, um, typing. It's not the most favorable. Uh, he already has a sidekick type. Um, and a don't think type. it's um, has a solid, solid attack stat. So I think this is a great pick. I don't think. Are you there? Looks like I lost Squid there for a second. Uh, but no, Clayton All is an absolutely great mon. The bet, the thing I like to all, uh, let me message Squid here. Is Clayton All is a levitator that is a rapid spinner as well. But yeah, we lost Squid, so I'll go ahead and continue here for a quick second. Looking too too bad. Not uh, the greatest. Bro, special you there? I thought it was, but uh. You there? Yeah, you, I'm still here. You legit cut out for like 30 seconds and you kept talking. I love it, number one. Oh wow. I was I was just like gibberish right now, but. Yeah, so I quickly took I think over. I, had, I said everything. Okay, good. Yeah, we're, we're on my pick of Gyarados now. Can you see the screen? I cannot. So I probably have to disconnect. Oh, hold on, no, no, no. Give me one second. Can you see it now? It's loading. Yeah, so I, my pick, I went ahead and picked up Gyarados. Do you want to talk about it so I don't have to talk about my pick? <laughs> Why you pick up Gyarados? Because you realized that Quagsire was not going to do the job. Nah, um, we, might, we mentioned Moxie. Moxie is phenomenal. Um, man, I'm trying to see who you're pairing this with. Is it with Tangela? I'm pairing it with Tangela. I'm pairing it with Quagsire as well because, like I said, in the regards to the Mammal Swine, they're the same type, but they do two different things. And their weaknesses, they both counter perfectly. With uh, Quagsire's being Grass type, I counter with Flying. And then uh, Gyarados is with Electric type, I counter with Ground type with Quagsire. So I feel like it's an honest, it's an honest Water typing pair made in Heaven. I love the fact I have an Intimidate core now between that, him, and uh, Torakat. And also, like you said, Moxie use, um, a Maxi user is going to be nice to start setting up Dragon Dances up if I so choose, just because I can. It's an offensive water type I've always wanted to use, and by God, I'm going to use it. Go for it. <laughs> I, I love it. I think it's a great pick. The fact that Gyarados is still around is crazy to me. Uh, but we're just gonna pick up here. Wow, colossal! Yeah, colossal. Uh, it's always been a, it's always been an interesting mod because I know it has the steam engine, which I think if you get hit by a water or fire move, it's like it jumps like to plus six speed by plus six. It's just like super scary and like anything that's super fast is pretty scary. So I think it's a really really good pick because he can bait it, and even when he does bait it. There's other mods that take it very, very nicely. Uh, have I seen it been used successfully yet? No. But leave it up to Beard to do that for you and just kind of blow you back and make you prep really, really hard for this mod. Um, looking at its other weaknesses, such as the ground weaknesses, uh, we have the Rillaboom, the Noivern, um, the Galarian Weezing if you wanted to, that it's the Zatu, take on that very nicely. Uh, the fighting weaknesses are covered with ghost types, with the uh, with the fairy, the the flying types. It's it's a great pick because it's covered very very nicely. And now we see Cantonian Sandslash being picked up for the beginning of the end here, Squid. We are rounding the beginning of the 
at last round with uh, Victor Vilbertini's. I love Sand Slash. Once again, it's a it's a solid ground type, solid spinner. Uh, definitely something that was needed on this team. And I'm going to go ahead and just jump into the next pick as well, and we'll talk about both picks together, where he's going to go ahead and pick up the Barrascuta. Oh my god, he picked up Barrascuta. Uh, the man had a plan. Yeah, we were talking about it. The Polytoad, you know, usually, like, there has to be something, and the Barrascuta, once again, the this... new U-turn with a flip turn. Uh, this thing is already, I think, like 130 in attack or it's 130 in speed one of the two uh, i know it's super fast i know it's super strong it's fragile but it hits so so hard um especially in the rain it's gonna be hitting even harder so this is gonna be super super nice um Barascuta doesn't need rain it does not but if it has rain it's an even even better mod so i really really do love this pick uh, along with sand slash as a spinner some really really good picks to close out his his team here up next we have dragalgy going for beard here um very very cool to see this go so late in the draft dragalgy definitely one of those uh wall breakers that you don't see drafted too often but when it does people don't people then realize just how powerful uh it can be i think you used it uh not too long ago and you found a new respect for it didn't you yeah, no, it's it's another mod that actually even gets flip turn. Why? I don't know why. why. Oh my god. <laughs> yes, it's actually so it's like super super awesome super. I That's love so it. Cool. I love I love it. It's adaptability, um, adaptability with a dragon move, adaptability with sludge wave. Uh, it's so so hard. Um, this mod is fantastic. It was under my RU team. It helped. Save the day and win me the championship. I love this mod so much and I have so much respect for it. And so why? Be, why would you pick this mod up? Because I can. So this is literally one of those mods that like no one would ever think of drafting, but uh Ho Hoenian, I'll call it yeah, Hoenian Lanoon with uh Belly Jump ex Extreme Speed is such an amazing mod to have because I don't have to bring this mod every week. Week It's kind of like Ditto in the sense that it's there to sit on the bench and so people have to pl plan for it because if you don't, I can set up and I can sweep you with this thing. And so this is what this is definitely that reason for uh, making sure that Lanoon just gets the job done and it is a normal type which is something that I did lack on the team if I'm not mistaken absolutely because normal types aren't normally drafted and so yeah this is definitely one of those ones that if you don't watch out and i bring this thing and you're unprepared for it i'm gonna be taking you out and there's nothing you can do about it and so i'm very happy to grab it i might change this in the future if i'm if if not but you know what i just might let it sit there all season just to mess with you what do you think about that squid do you like do you like the evil mind games uh i don't like the evil mind games um Nice thing is, I don't think I don't think it could take on Gengar. So I was, I wasn't too mad when I, I was like, oh wait, I have Gengar out. I should be safe. Listen, all I need, uh, if that's the only one I need to get rid of, then so be it. Uh, I I think Lightning is it's a great mod though. Yeah, to get slept on that that whole belly jump is it's so funny because back in PGL, my opponent didn't click belly to jump, and when he he could have, he actually could have won the game. So I remember that I, battle. I definitely remember yeah, that battle. He, we talked about it afterwards. And I was like, dude, if you would have clicked Billy Jump, I would have lost. And he's like, no way. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> uh, dude, Como O. Como. Como O. So glad it doesn't get the Clangorous Souls or Clang. Yeah, I think it's Clangorous Souls. Clangorous Souls, yeah. Yeah, so, so happy about that. But it's still a really, really good mod. This thing gets access to Rock Polish. So we were talking about that plus two speed. Um, I still love its clanging um, scales. I think that's a great, great move. I like, I love its typing, being a dragon fighting type, because uh, it has the counter for steel types. It doesn't have the counter for um, for the fairy types as I would like, but it still gets poison jab, which I think is great. And it also gets flash cannon. So this thing can either be physically or especially offensive. It's a fantastic pick. 
Absolutely, and like the setup with this mon is phenomenal as well. I can easily say, like for the limited time I did use it in PGL not too long ago, um, there were different there was a lot of different potentials that were there. I ended up dropping it because I couldn't use it to the to as great as it could be, which is unfortunate. But I was able to see a couple other coaches uh, through the system use it really, really well, and so it'll definitely do well here. But Mr. Rhyme. Uh, showing up on DJ's team to round off everything. Another Ice type showing up. Another Psychic type. So definitely uh, double typing there with Celebi, which is very interesting. But uh, Mr. Rhyme is so interesting. I don't know what the heck it does, which scares me because I have to face this thing soon. But what are your thoughts on Mr. Rhyme? I'm not sure what it does either. I, I never got the hype about the mine. And, um... It's weird. It, it is weird. Um, will we see it? Probably. But I, I don't really have any commentary about it. Yeah, no. I hope it's better than Mrs. Mine. I, I'm looking at everything. It looks like... Uh, Mrs. Uh, Mom. Let's see. Heavy Duty Boots, Screen Cleaner on Switch Ins, the effects of Aurora Veil, Light Screen, and Reflect End for both sides. That's an interesting ability. Didn't know it did that. Uh, but looks like it has access to Freeze Dry, Ice Beam, Psychic, Healing Wish, Focus Blast. Is a Rapid Spinner, so that's probably another reason why he got it. Did not know Mr. Mime got Rapid Spin. It That's very cool. Uh, but yeah, looks like it's just a pretty solid physical attacker there. 110. Uh, maybe picked it up for the Rapid Spin. Maybe picked it up just to have an unknown on his team. But I like it. I actually like it now, so who knows. We'll see. And then Hatram for Matt, another one point Mon for Matt to kind of just round off his draft. I highly doubt that this was a, an honest pick for Matt. It was just something to help round off the the draft so uh, the, the, the draft could continue. And so I think we can skip this one, Squid. What about you? Yeah, go for it. Cutie Fly, once again, I think it fits into that category. I don't think Blaze will be using a Cutie Fly. Once again, it was something... I think he did mention he wanted a, a Weber, though. Ooh. I think that's the one thing he did mention about this pick, that he wanted a Weber to um, take Dude. about his team, which I, I, I enjoy a lot because now that that helps out a lot to his team because he had... Like, the Darmanitan is going to benefit from that, the Flygon, uh, the Mo Rotom Mo. Swear um, to God. If he, I don't know if the Avalog would, but if Blaze you know, uses everything else, pretty much will benefit a lot from the webs. If Blaze utilizes this Kitty Fly to the highest degree, I'm gonna I'm gonna laugh my ass off. I'm not gonna lie. But speaking of another amazing web user, you have the Araquinid going to the Tasmanian Toxic Rokes. Um, Water Bubble, an incredible ability. Having access to those webs for everything here, the Mel Metal, the Azumarill, the Kiram, the Crocodile, now all have the appropriate speed they need to just to absolutely wreck house and to get this for your last pick. This is probably top three teams now, Squid. I'm not gonna lie, this is top three teams. Yeah, I know, without a doubt. I think this is just starting off with that core that he did. It was like, hold up, this is powerhouse. Adding the webs that he needed. Uh, I was, you know, we were hoping that he would have a solid, solid trick room setter. And hey, Porygon 2 can do that actually. Now I'm looking at it. Now he has webs, he has the talent flame, which is super, super nice. The Cursula can also set up the trick room. So yeah, this team is extremely, extremely dangerous and very powerful i would i would agree this this is probably one of these top three teams and up next we see that we are going to get a little bit more love for the sand team with this stoutland i like this stoutland is always one of those mons that you do usually see drafted at the end of a lot of draft teams to round off a sand team it does get access to uh, fun things like the elemental things as well as play rough if I'm not mistaken But no Stoutland can really hit hard once it's in sand, which I really really like it doesn't really do much outside of that But as far as adding it as uh, to a sand team. I really like it Agreed agreed. Um, yeah, we um This is yeah completely opposite like outside of sand. It's kind of like iffy but with Sand, this mod is extremely, extremely powerful. So, so good. 
Uh, I do love it with the Tyranitar. Um, it's a great, great pick. You couldn't resist, could you? <sighs> Dude, I tried not to. You Honestly, I, I wanted Rapidash. So originally, my game plan was Rapidash. But then Alejandro jumped in my DMs. Charizard. And start, started playing these mind games. And then as I started looking, I was like, hold up. Charizard plus Lantern plus Tangrove sounds so much better than Tangrove plus Lantern plus Rapidash. If you think about it, uh, Charizard's weaknesses are electric, water, and rock. Oh um, dear god, yeah, you're right. So, le pair with Lantern, there's already the walk and the electric immunity if I wanted to. Uh, Tangrove is a beefy, bulky boy that can eat up all those rock hits. So yeah, when I put it like that, I was like, oh wow, this is actually so much better than, I, I wanted the flash fire rapid ash, but at the end of the day, I was like, you know what? Nah, I'm gonna take Charizard. You got your boy. I did. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and jump into Drapion to wrap up Carlos's draft here. We are almost there, Squid. The only weakness this yes. thing has is the ground type, which I feel fits really, really good. He has a lot of decent uh, mods to uh, help with that a little bit. We got the Rotom Heat, you got the uh, Sigilyph. Uh, actually, it looks like that's gonna be it, honestly. It looks like there is a bit of a ground weakness there, uh, kind of ra rounding off, but no, Drapion is nothing to be to sleep on with that sniper ability, upping the chance to hit critical hits, has access to, I believe, Thunder Fang, Fire Fang, uh, Night Slash on top of Sniper, almost guarantees it to uh, crit every single time. Very, very powerful Mon. I loved using this back in Season 4, I want to say, of uh, LDL Season 5. Uh, but yeah, I think this is a really cool Mon. Once again, a Poison type. Not something you, you see usually drafted too much, so it is exciting to see this one drafted. Yeah, I, I like Drapion. Drapion, it's a, it's a nice mod. Surprise, actually, it's still around now. It gets those spikes. I love the knockoff on this thing. Uh, you mentioned still a little bit of a, a ground weakness, but I, I feel like he, he's going to be able to play around it very, very nicely. It's, it's Carlos. So... And last but nice not least, least, we're going to go ahead and end everything off with Lunatone. Last it, but not least, um, the Phoenix Sun Floors, the Sun not Floors. Not sure what's going on here, but. Draft the <laughs> Lunatone. The Lunatone. It's, um, what does this thing do? Dude, this thing is pretty scary. I'm not going to lie. There's a couple interesting sets that you can run with this thing. I mean, of course, you can run it pretty bulky if you want and kind of uh, mix set. I mean, a. Uh, somewhat of a special attacker you got stealth rock capabilities you have interesting move sets like psychic ice beam moon blast and shadow balls so it does have a semi decent speed set of 70 so there are some things you can do that but um this thing with the access to levitate once again just uh just gives arthur the most impressive uh, ground immunities that i've ever seen or ground resistances in general for any team which is so funny because, you know, ground types are the freaking tits. Uh, but it also has access to things like Calm Mind, there's Baton Passing, uh, Earth Powers. If you want to, there is Grass Knot, Gyro Ball, um, Hypnosis, if he really feels like it, dude. I mean, this thing even gets access to Nasty Plot, or once again, on that bulkier side, it does get access to Plane Split. Lunatone is very versatile. Uh, I'm looking at it right now. It is a one-point mon, so maybe he just drafted it just to end the draft. But I really hope Arthur does go ahead and use it. And with that, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, he just wants that a rock type, bro. With that, ladies and gentlemen, that is going Finally to be it. the end, right? No, we wanted this to be a two-hour thing, and we're looking four hours on now. <laughs> we need to plan these things better in the future. I swear to God. <laughs> I don't know how uh, everyone else does it in like two, three hours. We need to figure out a better way. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're probably just gonna have to like two cents, like one sentence by you, one sentence by me. That's it. Exactly. Yeah. Move on. Uh, but no, thank you guys so much for watching the matches that are gonna be going up, or if you want to see 
Everything will be located in the Lonely Leagues uh, Discord channel, which we will hopefully be able to link down in the description below. Uh, for the coaches that do go ahead and uh, post videos to YouTube, we'll make sure we try and uh, link their YouTube channels down in the description as well. Well, thank you guys so much for sticking along. You know, this is definitely a big return for a lot of coaches that do post content, Squid and myself included. Uh, I believe matches start not... Well, we're just going to start uh, doing battles and everything, but you won't probably see an upload until next week once everything starts getting going. So thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like for this. Uh, let's get LDL going uh, for an incredible season as we jump into the Switch era of draft leagues and squid do you have any closing words you guys are amazing stay blazing quit out you know what i miss that so much you have no idea thank you guys so much <laughs> for watching this is umber the two and we're out peace